Yes, you can. Is that okay with you? Yeah. So right. we have a caretaker. Ready, guys? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the August uh, monthly meeting for the Board of Finance. If everyone would please rise. I'm going to ask Mr. Brown to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <laughs> He's on time. Don't you know that? <laughs> Although we did speak to him. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> yep, we did. All right. A um, couple of items. Uh, first of all, so I looked at this agenda about uh, 30 hours ago and thought that it would be a relatively uh, calm meeting tonight. But uh, in the last 16 hours, uh, some new information on some uh, topics have come to light. And uh, under um, any communications, item number four, uh, I'll allude to those items and decide whether we want to, we can decide as a board whether we want to take them up tonight. Um, so the state of play right now is to approve the minutes of our regular monthly meeting held on June 7th, to approve the minutes of the special meeting held on June 29th, uh, sec, uh, item number two, to discuss the town attorney pending litigation. Uh, we'll do that in executive session, private executive session. Item number three is to hear, consider, and act upon a request from the Director of Public Works for an appropriation from 78000 from Water Pollution Control Authority Reserve Fund for the combined heat and power feasibility study at the wastewater treatment plant. That's to be offset by a $50,000 grant from the Connecticut Clean Energy Fund. Item number four will be to hear and act upon uh, any communications. Uh, the two items to discuss our report a further report from our Metro Train Center uh, subcommittee uh, audit and a potential request for some additional funds to complete that audit process. And then um, on Sherman School and some new information about uh, a previously acted upon request uh, for or bond appropriation. I think it was uh, $2.2 million that was approved earlier this year. Uh, and some new information has come to light on that project. And then item number five will be uh, to hear, consider, and act upon any other business which shall come before this meeting. So I guess my two items could properly come either under number four or number five. So that's the state of play for tonight. Um, first item, to approve the minutes of the regular monthly meeting held on June seventh, two 2011. Any uh, questions, comments, <coughs> concerns on those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor of approving those minutes? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, those minutes are approved. Uh, to approve the minutes of the regular, of the special meeting held on June 29th, 2011. Um, before we go to that, Deb, can I ask them um, if we kept, I would like to keep the tape of that meeting? Great. And I would also like, uh, the Board of Selectmen also were at that meeting and ask some questions. And quite frankly, uh, before we approve those minutes, I'd like the Board of Selectmen to be able to uh, take a look at those and opine as well, considering that uh, that meeting was a, a special meeting held for a specific purpose. So uh, this was properly noticed on this. I'd like to move to the table this to our September meeting, uh, the approval of these minutes. Do I have a second for that? Seconded by Mr. Bolito. Any other questions, comments, concerns on this item? Seeing none, all in favor of tabling it? Opposed? Abstention? So we'll table the vote on those minutes until the September meeting. I would ask everybody to please um, take a look at those minutes, make sure any of your comments are on there. Mr. Tetro, I'd ask that um, you and I communicate the same to the two selectmen that work with you as well as yourself to make sure that um, given the gravity of that situation that uh, those meetings are complete and accurate. And Deb, that we have a copy of that tape. Do you want the tape itself? Uh, can, can I get a copy of it? Would that be possible? Can you make a copy? That'd be great. Thank you. All right. Item number two is to discuss with the town attorney pending litigation. Uh, this would be in private executive session. 
Uh, can I have a motion? Mr. Belito? Motion to go into private executive session. Do I have second. a second? Mr. Stone? All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, so we're going to head out back and then we'll reconvene here in just a few minutes, okay? All right. I'd like to make a motion to come back out of executive session. Do I have a second? Mr. Belito, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? All right. Motion carries. Uh, we're back out of executive session. Item number two on the agenda for this evening is dispensed with. Okay. Item number three. To hear, consider, and act upon a request from the Director of Public Works for an appropriation of $78,000 from the Water Pollution Control Authority Reserve Fund for a combined heat and power feasibility study at the wastewater treatment plant to be offset by a $50,000 grant from the Connecticut Clean Energy Fund. Good evening, Mr. White. And Mr. Tetra, would you like to join Mr. White? Is, or <coughs> no, it's okay. The um, floor is yours. The project is uh, for $78,000 uh, with an offsetting uh, grant that we have in hand uh, signed by the Clean Energy Fund for $50,000. Uh, the net uh, cost to the WPCA reserve of um, $28,000. Um, the project involves uh, taking advantage of the um, methane gas that's produced um, through one of the processes at the treatment plant. Uh, currently, it's just simply flared off. Some of it is used to uh, put through a boiler and create some heat. But the feasibility and study feasibility study involves, um, and we think it will be very successful, uh, <coughs> determining a, a piece of equipment, a reciprocating engine or a, um, a turbine engine that the methane gas could be uh, processed through, generate uh, low-cost uh, electrical energy and uh, heat. The heat would be used at the treatment plant and also it's used in the, the digestion process. Uh, in the detailed uh, part of the 14 points, I, I break down the different elements of the report. But I'll answer any of your questions. Thank you. Mr. Belito? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When you say that you'd be able to generate low-cost electricity and heat, is that where is that going to be used specifically for at the, applications? At the treatment plant. Just so it's just at the treatment plant. Yes. Basically, you can make the treatment plant essentially self-sustaining and get off the grid. More self-sustaining, correct? Uh, our, our electrical rate is uh, fairly high at the treatment plant, about uh, twenty cents a kWh. So, how much off the grid do you think you'll be able to get? Uh, this unit would be uh, in, this, in the range of uh, 75 to 100 kW. We're 1,100 uh, kW in consumption, uh, which is offset uh, by about 400 uh, kW with other devices now. So we've still got uh, 600 that we're purchasing off the, the grid. This would take an additional 100 off of that. Okay. Um, Last question is, being that it's methane gas, any concerns about safety, uh, anything the neighbors need to know about? Um, again, the, the, the study or the uh, project, uh, if it goes forward, which I assume it will, has to take into consideration uh, an explosive environment. But that's already exists at the, at the facility right now. Right now we're capturing that methane gas, using some of it in a boiler to generate some heat for the buildings and the rest of it's flared off. But all that area is built with uh, mindful of the explosive nature of the gas. So it can be safely handled. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, concerns on this item? Seeing none, uh, one quickly for myself. The, uh, how comfortable are we that we're, we're definitely going to get this grant and that the, the state's financial situation doesn't put any of this at risk? Yes, this one is, uh, I have a signed agreement for it. Um, I can give you, it's a, it's a draft, but it is, um, well, 
Actually, they signed a draft. Actually, so. no, it's actually it's a signed agreement. I, I've got the draft copy, but I have a, uh, a signed agreement by the Clean Energy Fund, the engineer, and uh, at that time, first selectman, uh, Sherry Stenick. Okay. Mr. Uh, Hiller, no, no concern that this isn't going to happen? Okay. Any other questions from any board members? Yes, Ms. LeClaire. This is just to study what can be done. Is, do you have an estimate on what the eventual cost will be to put any findings into place? Uh, again, the, I'm 90% sure that the um, uh, payback would be with less than four years uh, on it. And I think we're looking at um, in the range of um, 300000 for project costs. And that, too, would be subject to some grants because it's a very uh, favorable project for uh, uh, reducing the carbon footprint of the uh, treatment plant. Currently, when you burn off that methane gas and basically like a big cigarette lighter, uh, it isn't that environmental friendly. So. And you anticipate that they're going to find a way to to use the methane gas? Yeah, the technology's come along. We know that there are other plants that are operating successfully with, uh, you know, similar engines running off of this type of uh, fuel. Okay. Thank What's you. That? Any other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, I'll go to the public. Does the public have any comments on this? Seeing none, back to the board. All right. So before us now, to here consider and act upon a request uh, from the Director of Public Works for an appropriation of $78,000 from the Water Pollution Control Authority Reserve Fund for the combined heat and power feasibility study at the wastewater treatment plant, offset by a $50,000 grant already secured uh, from the Connecticut Clean Energy Fund. All in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Mr. Brockfield, did you vote? In favor? Okay, so it carries unanimously. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I made the motion. Yes. Mr. Belito seconded it. You just didn't see it. We did it so quick. Yeah. We did the Vulcan mind meld here. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, to hear, consider, and act upon any communications, um, and to hear, consider, and act upon other business, which shall properly come before this meeting. So uh, we have two items that fall into these buckets of which I am aware that have come up within the last uh, 16 hours. Uh, one of those was um, related to our audit and Mr. Senefani is here to uh, along with Mr. Kiley to walk us through some of the details of that. This sh should come as no surprise and it's more of the Metro Center, Metro Train Center process. The second item is actually a um, item that I haven't received any paperwork on yet, and, it res and it's regarding the Sherman School. And uh, we have several members of the Sherman School community here, as well as I believe some building committee members uh, and some members of the Board of Education. So at the very least, what I would like to do is discuss this issue. If uh, we can have a two-thirds vote to put this on the agenda to discuss the issue of uh, Thurman Sherman School and this communications. Uh, Mr. Kiley. Mr. Chairman, thank you. I move to add to tonight's agenda by a two-thirds vote pending a vote of this body to add in, an item titled to discuss and receive an update report on Sherman School. On the Sherman School bond appropriation? Yes. Okay. Thank Do you. I have a second to that? Second in by Mr. Mayor. And all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. So that item is now before us. Is there, Mr. Tetra, is there somebody here to speak to this item for us and walk us through it? Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Richard Special. I'm a committee chair. Um, 
Pam Iacono, I'm a member of the Special Projects Standing Building Committee and also a member of the Board of Education. Good evening to both of you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us on short notice. Um, before we get to the options, I, I see a couple of documents that were um, handed out um, just now. But before we get to that, can you walk us through the process by which you arrived here tonight, what's going on with the project? I think we need the kind of chronology, the timeline, and, and what's happened uh, so that the board has a full flavor of what happened to this after we had approved an appropriation. I think back in February, was it? I believe yeah. it was, yeah, yes. January, February. January, yeah. February. Yeah. 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 Um, sure. Uh, Pamela. Um, well, as you know, we came before you um, about a year ago um, asking for um, uh, work to be done at Sherman School to finish off what were the additions to Sherman with the annex buildings. Yep. And um, the Board of Education had requested um, core upgrades to Sherman. Um, and those core upgrades were forwarded by the Board of Selectmen to the um, Special Projects Standing Building Committee. So we worked on that at that project level, at that building committee level, um, to um, examine what the scope of that would be and what the costs would be. And we hired a professional estimator, Turner Construction, to do that. And um, in order to do all of the work that was requested, it came in at around $5.2 million. And just to um, refresh your memory, Sherman's in a flood zone. We were constrict constricted by um, how much money we could spend um, on the project because of the assessed value. Um, you all remember this. So the project was s sort of artificially capped at the FEMA number, uh, which at the time was $1.9 million based on the then appraisal of the building. Um, we then went back and worked again to try and configure numbers that would work based on the scope of the project. Obviously, we had to significantly cut back five point. $2 million down to $1.9 million. Um, we cut a lot of the project out. We lost basically all the parking improvements that we were hoping to do. We had to cross off um, lockers from the project, um, some other um, ADA work and some other bathrooms throughout the school. Um, a, a lot of things were significantly cut back. Um, we then worked and got it down to basically um, uh, reconfiguring the administrative area so that it was more secure. If you remember, there's no glass partition to see anybody coming in the building at Sherman School. Um, the teaching space in that area was less than adequate in terms of servicing students with special needs as well as privacy issues with the nursing station and the location of the psychologist's office. Um, so we figured that we could do that in our budget um, as well as make improvements to the air circulation in the building um, by improving the ventilation system there. So we then came back and said we can we hope to be able to do this project for the 1.9 million plus um, uh, if we take the soft costs out, which we're figuring based on Turner will be another $300,000, we believe we can get this project done for $2.2 .2 million. So that's sort of the history of where we are. That's what the funding request was for. It was capped. We weren't allowed to go above the $2.2 .2 million. Um, and uh, that was sort of our marching order. We knew when we were working with that number that it was going to be extremely difficult to get even those things, that reduced scope, done for that amount of money. Um, but we were pretty much told by, quite frankly, the prior administration, this is it, make it work. Um, so as a building committee, we went back and pretty much, I'll be frank, told the estimator, find a way to make this work for $2.2 .2 million. Um, and we were trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Um, we started to put it out to bid and um, originally bid it as one whole project, only got one respondent, um, then decided to regroup and break it out into different pieces to hopefully save money as maybe a phased project. Um, 
see if that would help us at all, and it did not. Um, all of the bids, um, when you combine them, um, still came in above the $2.2 uh, million funding um, request that we were allocated. Um, and the reason why we're sitting before you this evening is, um, as the building committee contemplated what we could do about the situation what, that we were in, um, we realized that the bond resolution was written in such a way that we couldn't just do part of the project. We couldn't just do the administrative wing and then not do the fresh air ventilation um, because it was really one whole project. Um, and it would have reduced the scope of um, the bond resolution. And I know Mrs. Kennelly's here and bond council's here and they can explain the technicality on that better than I can. Um, so really as a building committee, we were faced with, um, uh, well, what we bring before you honestly are, are three different options. Um, and I can sort of stop there on background before I get into the options if anybody has any questions. No, so far so good. Mr. Bolito? Sorry. No, that's okay. You mentioned that Mr. Flato had essentially instructed the building committee to come in at the $2.2 .2 million number. Yes. What I want to understand is, was that because he was concerned about going over the FEMA cap, or was he concerned about going over the $2.2 .2 million? Because I understand that a substantial amount of this project, specifically the HVAC system, is considered code work and because of that does not count toward the FEMA cap. Correct. Um, I I can't speak for him on that. Yeah. I don't. I, I mean, don't we, I, I think that he, he just had, <clears throat> had a figure that he was projecting to us that he did not want to exceed. I, I don't think that, uh, the, the, the the FEMA is a known entity. We, right. The, so and then the 2.2 was his the, the sets, of, if you're asking for my opinion, the sentiment coming out of that meeting when we got our marching orders, it was that this was not to be a project that got out of control, so to say. Right. Um, and so essentially, FEMA was not the operative factor in Mr. Flato saying you got to come in under 2.2. It was just a, no. a number he said you got to come Well, in. it was. Yeah, I, yeah, well, I, I don't. Not a court of law, Mr. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't want to speak for him. I know what the rationale was. The rationale right. was the FEMA plus the soft costs that we thought we could make work. Okay, I then have a question for bond counsel, if that's okay. My understanding from hearing, we're kind of boxed in with the resolution, and from what Mrs. Iacono said, um, we are not allowed to just drop, for example, the HVAC. Um, fresh air component of this from the project because of the way the bonding resolution was written. Is that your understanding and is there a reason why the resolution was written so specifically? Because I know oftentimes we do these things vaguely so that we can accommodate for, you know, un unforeseen eventualities. Uh, thanks. I'm John Staffson from Pullman Conley for those of you who don't know. The, uh, the bond resolution, as written in our opinion, encompassed the entire project mm -hmm. so that when the building committee and the Board of Education went out and started bidding the project, as the very pe various pieces came back over budget, it, would, it was clear that there was a not enough money in the resolution to do the entire project. Right. Um, and the way it is written, um, uh, sometimes these things are written more specifically and sometimes they're written um, uh, more generally, the resolution itself is sort of general, but the backup material that was given to this board and then to the RTM was much more specific. So in our opinion, there is a funding issue here, and you have the option of actually scaling the project back to meet the 2.2, or as will be outlined, various options for increasing that amount to do the entire project as originally outlined. Now, I just want to back you up to something you just said. You said you can scale it back to the 2.2, or you cannot? Uh, to scale it back to the 2.2 .2 would require action by this board okay. to actually amend the scope of the project. So we would, in effect, be retroactively modifying the bonding resolution. Is that the mechanism? Uh, you, you, would, you, would you be modifying? <laughs> thank you. What you'd be modifying on the bonding resolution is the scope of the project. The resolution pretty much, in fact, would remain the same at the 2.2, .2, 
but the scope of the project, which uh, contemplated additions to the classrooms plus ventilation in various parts of the building and, and some energy improvements, I think if you scaled it back to the 2.2, you would probably have to participate in a discussion of which of those parts of the project you would want to finance and which parts you would want to modify. Now, as a practical matter or procedural matter, let's say, for example, that we decide to scale it back to the 2.2, we cite specific portions of the project to take out in order to get to that number, and then let's say the RTM rejects that. What happens then to the original bonding resolution? Is it still in play or is the whole thing blown up essentially? I would suggest that the original bonding resolution is probably still in play, but there's not enough money to do what the original bonding resolution uh, suggested. So that at some point, at some point, the boards are going to have to take some action, right. either to scale the project back, you in agreement with the RTM, or to add more money to complete to uh, to actually accomplish what the original resolution suggested needed to be accomplished. Is there any possibility of? somehow retroactively revoking the bonding resolution starting from scratch with a new one at the same number that's more generally written so that if there's some disagreement between say the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance and the RTM as to what specific items to cut that we could still at least appropriate the money and you know kind of have it out. I know it's a poser. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we got you the chair. <laughs> The, uh, so what you're suggesting is you would take is what is a rather specific request because there was some sp really specific backup material provided with this yeah. and you would make it a more general resolution. I think if you made it a more general resolution, uh, if you made it a more general resolution, if you, for example, just said renovations and additions to Sherman School, I think that it, uh, assuming you passed that and the RTM passed that, I think then that would go back to the Board of Education, the Building Committee, to they would then make the decision as to what to do um, right. rather than you folks making the decision as to what yeah, to no, do. Yeah, I understand that. And the reason I bring it up is I'm just trying to, in an ideal world, we approve it one way or another with specific recommendations and the RTM goes along with it. But unfortunately, you know, recent history has shown that there's sometimes a little bit of disconnect between what, between what we do and the RTM does. I just want to make sure that Duly whatever noted. action we take, <laughs> there's some consistency and uh, that we get this project on track one way or another. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the reason for my question. So he answered it. Thank you. Okay. I can, uh, before I turn it over, uh, one thing, Mr. Bolito, um, this board in particular, as well as other town bodies, had expressed some concern with uh, vaguely written bond resolutions from the past because sometimes we didn't get what we thought we were going to get and sometimes funds were transferred within a bond resolution. So we had made uh, the determination to be as specific as possible um, to make sure we got what we thought we were going to get from those bond resolutions. Um, and, and the backup material on this resolution was very specific. I mean, we do have other of our municipalities that we represent that would pass a very general bond resolution, but, uh, but to, the, to the chairman's point, that no, with it clearly was not the case here. Right. So when the question came back to us, what do we do, when it looks like if we do two parts of this project, we're not going to have enough money for the third, our recommendation is that the, that the issue needed to come back and be revisited. Yeah. Yeah. So that was... Mr. Chairman, I do have uh, three separate draft resolutions submitted by Bond Council. Uh, for revision, if you want me to distribute those, or do you want me to hold those? Let's wait for the discussion to to ferment, if you will, and we'll go from there. Percolate, Mr. Stone. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my question sort of uh, starts with the estimate that we got from Turner Construction, because that's what I didn't understand. Did they give an estimate to make it so it's, it comes to that 2.2 figure? So, but if, if they did that, that's not a fair estimate that we went up when we were doing our due diligence. I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, sort of, it's very deceiving to us to, to, to approve something like that. And then it's, it's not a true figure. The other, uh, you know, I'd, I'd just like a comment on that. The other thing was um, uh, I see there's only a couple of people that bid on it, mm -hmm. and it was, given to everyone. I, I don't know how it works, but it's posted and all well, it's that. A, it's the same bidding process we always follow. And the yeah. feedback we got was that a lot of the contractors looked at it and knew that, and they knew what our cap was, and they knew the work couldn't be done for that so, amount. So, but we paid Turner Construction to do a 
you know, an estimate. We did. One of the things that <clears throat> perhaps complicated and brought in the figures higher than anticipated on the part of Turner mm -hmm. was that we <clears throat> scheduled the project to occur in two phases, mm -hmm. which meant that we had double mobilizations, double setup. Um, there's a, a time factor. In other words, we know the cost of money currently. We don't know the cost of money next year. Uh, other factors that, that contractors will take into consideration in their bid, and they're going to be very cautious in their bid because they, basically because of the economic situation that the entire country is. No, I, I understand that, but the bids are so far off from the estimate. You know, I, I'm just wondering, the, the, I mean, we paid Turner Construction. I mean, they shouldn't have, in my opinion, maybe you've done the estimate and said we can't meet those figures. I don't know if I'm talking out of hand, but. No, I agree with you because you're basically saying, you know, we told them the number, somebody told them the number had to be 2.2. Yeah, it's so like you gave them the, the number of 2.2, yeah. right. and you paid them to come up with that estimate. There's a big difference between being off by 5, 10, 15 percent even right. for some of the comments that you're making regarding timing and stuff like that and being off by what amounts to 40 percent. Right. That's what I'm upset about. Right. I, I understand We're your point. We're just as upset. I know. Yeah. We, every, every meeting was, that we concluded what was with the statement hopefully we'll get the bids to come in as, as anticipated and uh, that was not the case thank you mr. chair um, following mr. stone and, and, and reading this document um, and understanding the 2.2 or the 1.9 was this document says that uh, Turner came in at 5.2 mil that was for the original scope of the project, which we knew was significantly over budget. So we already started to scale back significantly. Took out the lockers, took out parking improvement, took out one of the bathroom renovations, um, and then came back at 2.2, basically. Okay, and so just kept whittling down, saying, hopefully this will work, hopefully this will work. Okay. So <coughs> there was actually classroom additions that were removed Right, we took off two of the classrooms. Um, yeah, so they're not the stage. stage. I mean, any number of uh, quite a few items. Were. So, so the 2.2 was signed off on by Turner as the cost of your yes, yes, specs for your final yes. project. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are you done? Mary. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to understand a little bit more about what you said before about that code items don't have to be included in the FEMA requirement because when we approved the project, I don't remember that coming up, but I do remember having an intense discussion on the fire sprinklers and would that have fallen into the same category and would we have been able to do that? I, I think uh, perhaps we'll have a the architect address of uh, your uh, query. Right. But just to answer your question, we did cut the fire suppression system. That was one of the things that did not make the cut because we just didn't have the money. Well, it, that was in the original when we approved that the 2.2. No, it was not. Right. It was cut before that. It was cut before it got to 2.2. But, but wouldn't that have been a code item that would have been allowed then? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I can. We did not. I can have our architect That's George Wiles come know. up, but I we I don't know. Okay, because I just want to know is why did we have that big discussion on it? If I asked the same question at the building committee done. level, and I I don't have a good answer for you. I'm and, sorry. Okay. And and Mrs. Leclerc, and I, I'm sorry to do it again, but to to come back to what you're saying. I also had the same question because one of the items, and maybe you were just rattling off a bunch of items, that was removed from the project due to the FEMA constraint was making the bathrooms ADA compliant. So there again you have another compliance issue that was thrown out that was said to be because of FEMA, <clears throat> but yet it, it wouldn't have, by your earlier description, it wouldn't have mattered. 
Let me have the architect just give you an explanation as to where we got with the ventilation and how that is a, a um, code compliance issue and maybe that'll lend some insight. Well, I, I want to go to the bigger issue is what is FEMA says and what is code compliant, what is not code compliant because did they, are they forced to live with bathrooms that aren't code compliant because of a fictitious FEMA uh, rule that says that we can't spend that money in the school? I don't, I don't know that that question was asked of, of Mr. Went. So I don't, I don't know the answer to that. There's a lot of things we don't know right yes, now. Yes, you are absolutely correct about that. Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'll go to you and Mr. Tetra. You had something to add to that? You want to wait? I'll wait. Okay. Uh, the, uh, George Wiles from Wiles Architects, the architect for the project, uh, and I think on the FEMA issues, on the code issues, you ha have to take. Uh, each item by itself, and you can't group them together as code issues. So we'll take the first item first, which is the sprinkler issue. Uh, the sprinklers are not required as a code uh, requirement. Uh, the reason for that is because every single classroom has a means of egress directly to the exterior, which allows the building to not be sprinkled according to the uh, basic building code of the state of Connecticut. The only time that you can get an item of work to be a code item is when it has to be a code compliance item. Sprinklers are not a code compliance uh, item. They would be, for instance, a strong recommendation by the fire department to sprinkle all your educational facilities, but it's not a code requirement. Therefore, as FEMA sees it, it would fall into the capital improvements category column rather than the, the code compliance column. That's that issue. Yeah. On that? If I may, please? Yeah, please. So I, I heard everything. I, I hear everything you just said. And did I also hear that the sprinklers have been removed from the project? That is correct. As it sits here tonight. So my question is, why would you do that? The, because the sprinklers are not required. I understand they're not required. Compliance. My question is, why would they possibly be removed from the project? We didn't have the money. It's cost. Plain and simple. And it would go towards that FEMA cap, is what you're saying. Yes. It's not excluded. Yeah, they from would the go FEMA towards cap. the capital improvements. Right. Oh, but what about the bathrooms? Bathrooms is a separate issue. Uh, the uh, I got that when you right. The, ba the, ba <laughs> the, ba the ba It's not only the ba the bathrooms are not your major issue because you did have a uh, an ADA um, small renovation that was done. Uh, recent, when I say recently, since the school was built, an attempt to make the, the bathrooms more ADA compliant. Where you run into uh, the real um, uh, non-compliance with ADA is that every single exterior door, you have a six inch step. And that means that the, the means of egress does not comply with, um, with, the, um, with the ADA access for, for exits. Okay, so are you saying then because we have, what, one bathroom or we have one thing that's semi-compliant ADA that the, to make the bathrooms code compliant doesn't fall into this? In terms of FEMA. In terms of FEMA. Now, for the step going outside, for the egress, for the six-inch step, was that something that was looked at and pulled out of the project or was that something that was never part of the project or would FEMA give us an allowance for that? That was, uh, that was something that was looked at early in the project. A cost was identified uh, to it, and that was uh, pulled out of the project. Having nothing to do with a FEMA issue, I'm assuming, having to do with an overall cost issue. That's correct. correct. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else on the board have questions on this specific? Let's go to Mr. Brown and Mr. Bolito. Go to Mr. Stone, and I know Mr. Tetro had something he wanted to say. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, another discussion came up that night in February, and that was, does this project coincide with the capital improvements numbers for 2011-12 to 2013-14 and 15? In other words... Is it included in that? Yes. yes. From the, is it inclu it's in our long-term facilities plan, and yes, to answer your question. See, there was a ceiling, right? There was a cap that Mr. Flato put on the, for the projects at the Board of Ed could, that he would approve at the time. Now, that ceiling may change with the new Board of, with the new First Selectman. So did it go towards, I mean, do, do, Dr. Title didn't think it did go towards that ceiling, but Ken Flato um, thought it did go you know, towards hold that on. ceiling. Hannah, do you remember, did David... That, was Sherman part of that? Uh, 
No, of the whole capital thing when Ken was counting that stuff in. You know what, I do remember that discussion and I think they ultimately decided that Sherman was not supposed to be a part of that, but I'd have to double check and get back to you on that. I think they ultimately decided that they disagreed on whether it did. Yeah, and but I think that Dr. Title had looked it up and and they had come to an agreement that it was not part of that, but I, I need to double check that with Dr. Title if that's okay, okay. with you. No, that's fine. And, and the reason I ask is, look, Al Kelly, I think, presented this that night, yes. correct? Yes. And who, who was with him? Who presented with him? Was it the architect? I did. Okay. Because yeah. you guys were pretty confident at the time that 2.2 was the right number. Right. I mean, it, you said there was thorough research done. Yes. And there really wasn't any question that it might not come in at 2.2, correct? So let's say, I mean, that, that was the case that night. So, I mean, things changed. The question is then, if you could check with Dr. Title and check and see, because if we, if we have to change the bond, and we have to approve more money, whether it's 800000 or whatever for what I'm saying, then do you plan on taking a look at your long-range facility plan and seeing, uh, taking something away, dropping something else, reducing costs in another area so it comes in at the number that we're going to agree upon? I can tell you that this project is a priority for the Board of Education, and if that's something that we have to do, that's something we'll have to have a discussion at the board table with. Okay. Um, we're pretty much at your mercy, so <laughs> if that's what we need to work with, then that's what the board's going to have to work with. Okay, thank you. Mr. Belito. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, assuming that at some point there's going to be a specific request before us for additional funding, I know there's three options that we just got tonight, so we'll have to, you know, peruse those. In terms of making sure that this additional funding is in compliance with FEMA, and just to ref refresh my recollection from the last time, who actually determines whether something is, in FEMA's estimation, capital improvement or code compliance? Do we get an actual opinion from FEMA, or is that your job as the architect? <laughs> Who makes that call? Uh, I, actually, you know what? Let me defer to the first selectman, because we asked him to do a lot of research on this. If I may have a chair at the table. <laughs> <laughs> you may. Thank you. Uh, there, there have been three or four questions tonight that, that address on this, but uh, specifically back to starting with Mr. Belitos. Uh, uh, our zoning uh, officer, Jim Went, okay. is judge and jury on that. So that, that there was a meeting earlier in the week with um, uh, Jim Went, uh, Jim Gillerin from the building committee to establish on that. And, and basically what we wanted to see, as the building committee did, uh, what's included, what isn't. The issue with code compliance, it's not something that's, that's uh, not necessarily something you have to do in terms of bringing the yep. building up to code. It's not a requirement to do it, as we sometimes heard about things. Or if we overspent the FEMA limit, there are certain things we would have to do to bring it up to code. Right. It's, in, in essence, the reverse. FEMA says there's a limit that you can spend up to 50 percent of the assessed value of the building. There are certain exceptions. Exceptions are soft costs, as we identified earlier. Exceptions are site work outside. And exceptions are uh, code compliance issues if there's something that's actively not in code that, that needs to be addressed. In this case, air quality was the issue. So the HVAC, the ventilation system, because it's addressing air quality, didn't count against the FEMA cap. Okay. One, because that's such a big piece of this project, once you pull that out, you effecti effectively eliminate the FEMA guideline as a constraint. And we found this out subsequent to the bond appropriation being approved last February? Uh, we confirmed a lot of these details in the last week. week. Yeah. So when this was approved and many months ago, there was bad information on the cost estimates and there was bad information on the FEMA restrictions. Um, Other than that, everything was fine, right? I don't, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to say bad, but um, I'll say it. You're 40 percent off on your estimate, and you had to whittle down the air compliance thing because you thought it caused it caused the FEMA issue, right? We had inaccurate information, yes. Yeah. Inaccurate, bad, same thing, right? Right. We had inaccurate, yeah. Yeah. Our FEMA number's gone up too, by the way. Okay. 
you get a follow-up? I'm sorry, go ahead. And then I got That's Mr. Okay. Stone, and then I got Mr. Mayor. Did Mr. Went say that the HVAC system was a code compliance issue and exempt, or did he say it was a capital improvement that was not exempt from FEMA? Does anyone remember? Yes. Yeah. Who wants to take that? You can. Very specifically, because it's addressing air quality, and that's a building code issue, all right, it's a code compliance upgrade that is not con considered or well, charged I to. That. I'm saying back in February, because it seems that there was some confusion about whether this counted against the cap. And apparently the Board of Ed was operating under the assumption that it did count against the cap, and apparently that was not the case. So what I wanted to know is, since Mr. Went is judge and jury on this, back in February when we first approved this, did he say that this did or did not count against the FEMA cap? Do we know that? I'm going to defer to somebody who was on the team back in February. I, I don't believe that there was, I don't think that that was addressed by, at that particular point. I, I personally was not privy to the conversations between Mr. Flato and Mr. Went, so I do not know the answer to that question. But Mrs. Iacono, as a part of the committee and part of the Board of Ed, was it your understanding in February that the HVAC did or did not count against the FEMA cap? It was my understanding that it counted against the FEMA cap. Okay, and that obviously was incorrect information. That is correct. All right, that's what I wanted to get squared away. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go over to Mr. Stone, who's been waiting patiently, saying thank you, sir? On the, uh, the ventilation, when we did the tour of the school, I remember specifically uh, Tom Collin was there. Yep. And I asked him, um, is it required? To, change, to do all the ventilation over, and he said no, there was no, it didn't have to be done legally. Was he correct? Yes and no. I mean, we have. I mean, I, I know you want to do it. I'm just saying. Do Here, here's the issue, and you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to defer to George on it. We do have ventilation systems in terms of our windows and our doors, but the problem is opening and closing them present security issues. Um, so I'm going to defer to I him see, just yeah. to explain the technical why we are where we are. Uh, the short story is is that uh, natural ventilation is required in a classroom. It's 4% of the floor area has to be operable to be open. The 4% is achieved by the operable windows and the door. Once you remove the door, you almost remove about 40% of the natural ventilation available to the occupants in each classroom. Therefore, you require a mechanical system. That mechanical system has certain air changes that are specified, 10 CFM per occupant, uh, and that that kicks in. So when Tom Collins, uh, I hope I got the name right, uh, 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 asked that question uh, and answered, it didn't have, yes, he was, he was right, but no, uh, there is a code compliance issue because in fact, because of a security issue, those doors cannot be left open. Therefore, uh, we explained this to the uh, to Jim Went and the building official. We explained our opinion that it was a code compliance issue, and they both agreed uh, in an email to us a couple of days ago. Okay. We did present these issues back in uh, um, November and December of uh, 2010, but the uh, at that particular time, the drive and the goal of this project was to keep it at 1.9 at all costs. So that was a different approach than having a column of code compliant issues and a column of capital improvement issues. Uh, since there's been a change, uh, then, then those avenues of discussions have opened up to the building committee. Simultaneously, the building committee has real numbers before them, uh, not uh, try, somewhat defending Turner, mm -hmm. their estimates, even though they showed an inaccuracy which isn't all their fault, but what they did do is they provided a tool for the building committee to struggle with an impossible task of taking a 5.2 million expectation and dri compressing it down to 1.9. That's where we are right now. So. Um, just to change the subject a little bit, we, we have these bids, we know what we've approved, can we go back to these people and just say this is the amount of money we have? Yes. Would you, I mean. Well, we did a scope review and the, the, we are where we are. We cannot do the project for the amount of money that's And they, and they won't lower their price? 
No, we I mean, didn't. I don't know if you can do it, go back to them that way with public bidding. There, there was a certain amount of value engineering that was done, and it amounted to about fifty thousand dollars, and that was that's about the max that you're going to get out of it. Right. The, the other, my last question is on uh, South Sea. Is that there? Yes. They did Fairfield Woods, if I recall, and didn't we have problems after that? Am I correct? I was not a part of I that know you project. Weren't, but I was. <laughs> We did, right? So would we still use them? Um, the the uh, purchasing agent is, yeah. is in the process. She would, she would vet that. I, I mean, I, don't, I, I remember some of the problems were serious. Did they correct the problems at Fairfield Woods? I, would, I had no involvement at that, that point, although certainly the purchasing, any award is made will be after a total vetting is done by the purchasing uh, department. Yeah, and Bob, can you give us more color since you were involved on the salt well, I, I wasn't on the committee or anything. My kids went to school there. I remember there were cracks in the cement and stuff like that. Uh, I can't and remember. And that was ever. done in the original renovation that was done that was back in 95. Yeah, right, right. Okay. And I think there was uh, also a delay in getting the, the building done on time. I remember they were in portables for longer than they were supposed to be. But I remember with South Sea Construction, I, you know, I don't know how much was true and how much wasn't their fault, to be honest with you. Yeah. It'd be important to note before yeah. we give them another project, no? We, we, you know what we should do is, is probably ask uh, someone who was on that committee. I think Jack Slane was on it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could answer that. Well, so the purchasing yeah. agent is in the process of uh, checking references I was just on say the that. contract. And I think yes. Eileen has. Uh, that yeah, part. please. Let's. I think we've got a good reference right here. So, I hope she's calling Mrs. Canelli for a reference. So. We certainly did have some number of problems with Saucy at the time. Uh, the first of which was on, which had something to do with why the project got off schedule was, there was a very sudden death, and someone high up in the project was the project manager. And that threw the schedule off quite a bit. Uh, he was actually doing an excellent job as project manager prior to that. So that was something no one could foresee or help. Uh, aside from that, there were a number of other issues in getting things done the way we wanted them done. Uh, my recollection is the biggest issue ended up being the field out and back. Right. And it took that. a very long time to get that corrected. Was, were they involved in that as well? Yes, they were. Uh, that was at the very end of the project. It was it was a very difficult thing to get them to correct that particular thing. But we're also talking now about something that occurred 15 years ago. And uh, it's possible that in the meanwhile their reputation may may have been amended. And certainly the, um, the purchasing director proposes to go and get um, recommendations, references for all of the people who have bid on this project whose bids fit within the parameters of what we think we can spend. So if it turns out that, um, you know, as we've gotten to this point in time, their references are fine, uh, we don't usually go back 15 years in looking at references. It's usually more like the last five or so. No, uh, no but you would think that if we were the ones at giving a reference to ourselves, we might take that under advisement and consideration. Uh, I'm not saying it shouldn't be taken into consideration, but uh, every, everyone has their, their bad Agreed. projects. And sometimes when you've done something that was not satisfactory, it gives you more of an incentive to do it right the next time. Okay. I'll buy that. Mr. Mayor, you had your hand up. Uh, one editorialization, it's, uh, I don't think we've had one school project that didn't have problems. So, yeah. so it's either Fairfield or Nature of the Beast. Um, trying to reconcile, and, and this is lots of pieces of paper uh, to absorb quickly, but uh, the last page of the, the numbers handout, the cost and construction options, if you <coughs> draw a line under add alternative one, the number is one point or two, you know, two point one million dollars, you know, um, which is less than two point two million dollars. So, uh, if you look at the notorious Salasi uh, bid, 
Does that mean that if that was the accepted bid, you could get everything you wanted done under the 2.2 million, with the exception of the cafeteria and the gymnasium ventilation? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, you're under uh, option one at one one A. That's correct. You get the addition, uh, the kitchen uh, uh, renovations in addition. Um, you get the uh, classroom ventilation. Uh, you get a uh, scope, uh, when we scoped out, uh, Salsi offered to drop his bid, $88,000, and uh, you get the gym ventilation. What you don't get is uh, you do not get the energy recovery and you don't get the cafeteria ventilation. If you want to buy those, you've got to jump over to, and Salsi happens to be the low bid when you take everything, at the 2.5, which is uh, option 2A. So... Yeah, the, the, the first sheet is a better summation. It's got more numbers on it, so it's more difficult. That's a little bit more <laughs> scoped out. But, but, but the point being that just because those numbers are sweet because they're there's only like four or five of them that are together and they total up and you know, so but the point being that for two point one million dollars you can do almost everything that seems to be significantly I mean, important. The soft costs, though. Yeah. You're talking hard construction costs, not total. Right, cost. right. Right, hard construction costs. So right. You have to add the soft costs to it. But, right. yes, that's I'm correct. Gonna... Again, you don't get the classroom uh, cafeteria ventilation, and you don't get the energy recovery. Right, and, and, and you don't have the, the contingency percent. Um, and the soft costs are like two hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's correct. And and that is what soft costs slash owners costs. Architectural engineering fees, printing documents, geotech, environmental hazmat, surveyor, special inspections, commissioning. Oh, okay, right up there, those things. Right, got it, got it, got it, got it. all those. All of which are necessary. Yeah. So, and those. So it's not going to point one. Is there any way to separate those from the from the re bond resolution? Well, if you want, I mean, we have to basically we have to do one of two things. We have to vote on a new scope of services or vote on a new dollar amount. Right. And um, I didn't get to the, the explanation of the different options because <coughs> I was just going through history. But if you would like us to walk through the options and what they are at this particular point, we're happy to do so. We're well, let uh, me, your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, no. Following on Mr. Mayor's comments, though, um, <coughs> what was in the original, what was approved in the bond resolution? So, and I think I'm going where Mr. Mayor is. You have option 1A here, mm -hmm. right, which automatically has $288,000 added for gym ventilation. Yes. For all, for all three. So I'm assuming that was not included in the original. What, when we came before you in January and asked for the 2.2, what was included in that was option 1. The reason why we brought you back. 1 or 1A? Um, they're, they're the same. They're, the, they're the same. If I could, I'll walk you through. On, on this front page that has the wording, you have option one. That's what you get for option one. What, the difference between one and one A are just two different contractors. Otherwise, it's the exact same. Oh, you mean between one A and one B? Oh, and one B. I'm sorry. That's what's. I, I'm sorry, yes. It's the same scope. It's a different contractor. They're two different contractors. So in other words, why is the gym ventilation listed as alternative number three then? Was that, what I'm trying to get to is, and I think, Mr. Mayor, this was your point, right? What was in the original resolution? What was approved? And what's causing us to go over? Because this would imply that the gym ventilation was in addition to, because it's listed as an alternative, the original 
resolution and appropriation? It's my understanding that the original request came through for the classroom at renovation, the, I'm sorry, the administration wing, the cafeteria, the classroom ventilation, and the gym ventilation. Do, we have bond counsel here. Do you yeah. happen to have the detailed schedule you were talking about earlier? Right, it was. Yeah, he's looking. Well, doesn't, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, please, Mr. Do, Kiley, feel free. Doesn't by default yeah. option yeah, number three correct. answer Mr. Flynn's question? Or I'm sorry, I didn't does, hear your question. Does option number three by default answer Mr. Flynn's question yeah. as to what was in the original bonding resolution? No, option number three um, would require your action to reduce the scope of the project, and that's what we would be able to complete with the amount of money that was allocated in the original bond resolution. Okay. So looking at it from that perspective, what's not there that should have been there or that was there? The ventilation for it's the just, classrooms. It's just the classroom ventilation. Cor so basically, that is correct. So option three. Oh, and the gym, oh, yeah, and the gym ventilation. Yes, sorry. So the classroom ventilation was there, but the gym ventilation was not there. We have, we have. No, 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 no. The, the classroom ventilation is not included in that, and the gym ventilation is not included in option three. Well, all these options have a million sub-options. Right. That is correct. It's, it's, it's like basically, what do we want to do and what do we want to spend? Well, but my question was, Mr. What's I was following up on Mr. Bond? Flint. I'm just trying to find out what was, maybe that was a bad place for me to start, but what was in it? Yeah, I think we're waiting right. on that. Right. Drum roll. Bond Council has something, so. Again, the resolution, we're relying on the backup that was provided as the committee asked. And the back and the, the information that was included was the security and the additional classrooms administration, classroom and gym ventilation and air quality improvements, and also kitchen renovation. Now the question is whether that's the cafeteria renovation. The question is whether that included ventilation or not. This is unclear, but obviously when it was bid, it was bid with the ventilation. So I think what the original scope was, was the entire project that you sort of have before us that they've bid out in pieces now. Right, but let's, let's be clear though. Option one, right, and I think you just said it. It included the, the admin in the kitchen spaces. It included the classroom ventilation and it included the gym ventilation. Correct. Okay. It doesn't say that it included cafeteria ventilation. Could be vague. And it didn't say that it included energy recovery. The, uh, the, the, the building, the pro special project standing committee that you have report on this also suggested that there was a kitchen renovation and alteration, which I, I think you could anticipate would probably have to have include ventilation if you were doing the cafeteria. I think that's where the cafeteria ventilation came from. <laughs> there was a whole, yeah, I do remember some specifics being. Because I don't know how you renovate the cafeteria without doing the ventilation, but. Because no. it, it was the serving lines. Correct. As I recall. Right. Correct. Right. So really what, you, what that would imply is that option one, to your earlier point, was the original scope of the project? Well, not the original. It was the scope that we brought to you for consideration in so January. As far as I'm concerned, it's the original scope is what we approved. Oh, yes. Is, is, yeah. if, if you look at it that way, yes. Okay. Okay. I got it. Questions, comments, anybody else? Mr. Stone, you're on a roll. Keep going. Well, just go. <laughs> Yeah. So just getting back to, to Turner, because this is what's really upsetting me. How much did we pay them? Fifteen thousand. All right. But but they were supposed to give a a legitimate estimate, not a guess. And they weren't supposed to I, I don't at least from what I'm hearing, they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They did what they were asked. What, to come up with two point two? I, I think we were de deceived Be because obviously it's it's not anywhere near there. 
I'm done. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chair, I have a general question, then I have a couple questions. And I don't know if, who can answer this question. Why do we go, why do we pass a bond resolution prior to having bids? He's been with me for the last two years. Discussion. <laughs> That's the way we always do it. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> moving along. Um, I, I guess. I'm, one of the, I've, as, as we sit here and talk through this, I'm kind of figuring out where all the pieces go and all the, how these pages work together. Um, and at some point, I guess, we need to get to a point tonight. I'm asking a question that we should have a resolution. I mean, what we're is having our plan? A we're having a discussion tonight. Um, I've got my own views, and I think others have expressed views about whether we should actually vote on this tonight. Okay, and I think that'll be the, the next topic of discussion, but I wanted to air some of our questions, comments, concerns on this right now, and then come back to that uh, topic. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Now, then can you, then to the Board of Ed, is, or, and, or to the Building Committee, or is there a recommendation, that, a request? I and mean, we have three options. Each option has multiple sub-options. Is, is, is there, uh, I guess the Board of Ed says do it all. That's <laughs> not true, actually. <laughs> That's um, good. Things have changed since those They were have left. changed significantly, um, I'm proud to say. Right. The reason why you have option one, two, and three before you is because um, uh, as the committee worked through the numbers and what we were faced with, we wanted to, um, in an effort really to take you through the history of what we had been through and what we had cut out and what, what we had gotten down to. Um, the, I know it's not Mr. Flynn's terminology, but the original scope <laughs> of the project would have included option two, but we took so many of those things out because we couldn't get to the 2.2 number. So we just wanted to make you aware of, in anticipation of the question, what did you get rid of on the 2.2, option two is it. Um, in a perfect world, this is what the building committee would like to do. We would like to do the entire ventilation for the entire building. Um, and we would like to do the administration and kitchen spaces. Um, however, we do recognize that when we stood before you in January, we had scoped down the project to just the items that are listed in option one, which is the addition in the teaching administration kitchen spaces, the classroom ventilation, and the ventilation in the gymnasium. So, um, you know, rather than coming back and saying, well, really, we were looking for the 1.2 additional because that's really what we wanted and we had to get down to 2.2. Um, we didn't think it was fair to just completely cross that off. We thought it was better to at least acknowledge what we, where we had been um, and let you all consider that. Um, if you want to work with what we brought you in January, we're at your mercy, so we're per perfectly amenable to that. And then obviously option three is to tell us you want to stick with the $2.2 million cap that was put on this project, the original bond resolution, and if that is the case, then we're asking you to revise the bond resolution so that the building committee can then go back and do some of this work. Um, because we are right now as a building committee are at a complete and utter standstill. We cannot move forward with anything. And the reason why we requested the meeting this evening and asked to have this quote unquote fast track twofold. One, the bids are only good for 90 days. And two, the longer we put this off, um, we start to get into winter construction and the numbers can start to go up. Um, so this is completely, we, we are at your mercy. We are at your discretion and, um, that's where we are. Does option, thank, thank you, that was good. Does option three include, I meant that sincerely. Thank you. very clear and complete. Um, does option three include ventilation in the classroom? It does not. No. So is, do you believe that ventilation in the classroom is less important than ventilation in the lunchroom? So I believe that ventilation is less important. Well, the I mean, the, I mean, the lunchroom is used a couple hours a day, maybe, and the classroom is used 
All well, the day. classroom's used all the time, so that's right, why we right. want. That's why we prioritized for the classroom ventilation. Ideally, we would have ventilation in the entire building, but we certainly understand the financial constraints. That but we're but I mean, facing. option three says cafeteria and no classroom. I would thought it would say classroom but no cafeteria. You know That's why that is? Because there's a little bit of leftover money if you just do the, if you use the $2.2 million and you just do the administration kitchen space work, there's enough money to then you could ventilate the cafeteria, but you can't ventilate anything else. Thank you very much. Couple of questions for you. I, I want to revisit. I apologize, but I, you know this. Do you want to ask Rich and George some stuff? <laughs> I'm looking at you, but I'm I'm willing to I'm willing to have anybody answer the questions. But you know, part of, part of what's important in going over this stuff is learning for the future. So, so there's a number of things in my mind that are upsetting me. One comes back to Turner Construction. You know, one of the problems, Mr. Chairman, is that if we stopped using everybody that we have problems with, we'd have nobody to do any uh, work for us. But but um, <laughs> that's encouraging. But well, it seems that way from my time here. But the what's really upsetting me, though, to tell you the truth, is that, and I don't know where to affix blame, but these people, Turner, I'm sorry, were again paid to give us a, a professional, and these guys are like the biggest and the best of what they do, from what I understand. Were paid to give us an estimate to complete a job, right? Like if I went to the doctor, I was feeling really bad. I would love them to tell me, you, you know, take some vitamin C, you're fine, and go home. But if I actually have something really wrong with me, I expect that's what a professional does. He gives you an honest accounting of what the situation is. So something looks really wrong here. I understand what you're saying happened, and we're, without trying to use names or anything, in terms of them being told that that's the price that we wanted to see. But they should have simply said, well, you know, I, I, we, here's your money back. We can't give you an estimate if that's what you want us to do. So I, nobody has to answer this self-evident question, but I mean, somebody should be looking into how this came down and why a company with this kind of reputation would possibly do what you've described they may have done, right? And that's a <clears throat> if, right? It needs to be looked into. I so. did call Turner this afternoon, and I <clears throat> asked them if they would be willing to attend the meeting uh, to give their version of, of why the shortcomings, okay? Uh, it was just too short a notice. Mm -hmm. This came together very quickly, mm -hmm. um, they <clears throat> just wasn't going to be possible for them to get, get here tonight. And I appreciate that, but I'm just, so I'm just repeating that, that it's not your responsibility, actually. Some, somewhere in the town, we have to have somebody who follows up on this kind of stuff. I'm just saying, Mr. Iocano was very candid in, in answering the question that Mr. Stone asked as to how that 2.2 appears to have come from them to us. And if it's right, there has to be some reckoning. That, that's, that's the first question. The, the second question for me is, at what point in time did you guys, and now it is back to you, realize that this $2.2 million estimate, however it came to us, whether the previous administration told you to make that be what was, when did you realize that this was not going to be enough to pay for this project? And why didn't you come forward at that point in time and say this is not going to fly? Why are, we, why are we finding out about this on August the, uh, what's tonight, the third? Second. The second. When I can't, obviously this project can't be done for the opening of school, right? I mean, so. The, the expectation on the part of some of the committee was that <clears throat> we we're in an ec economic mores right now and that uh, we were hoping that some of the contractors would be actually hungry and, and, and give us favorable bids. Th well, that didn't happen. Um, the, the, the bids came in high. And, um, well, not to interrupt you, but not really high because you said that the 2.2 the .2 was, a, was a plugged in number to begin with. Nobody really thought that was accurate. So we were, we were hoping that some contractors would bid a low number to meet a number that nobody thought was possible in the first place. And again, I, everybody here is volunteers, so I don't mean to be prosecut prosecutorial. I mean that sincerely. I just got to get to the bottom of how we let these things fester like this and then become a crisis. I, I don't think you really know until you get hard numbers in. I mean, we're, we're not professional estimators, yeah, just, yeah. and, and uh, that's why we go Turner out. is. But Turner was. Yes, and, and that's why we went out to Turner uh, for guidance from him. And um, there were certain changes that, that did occur uh, that <clears throat> that perhaps Turner didn't anticipate. And I'm not defending them at all. Uh, it's just uh, 
the number they gave us was inaccurate. I'm going to go over to. I'm sorry, Mr. Bradfather. I don't want to cut you off. No, I please. appreciate that. I have a, a, one more follow-up. Please. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, is that um, well? Before my follow-up, I'd say that no matter what, we have to have a careful top-to-bottom look about how we go through this entire process because this just seems to happen over and over again. But my my last question is, what's the rush? It's no longer possible to get this thing done for the opening of school. Right? Mm -hmm. There's no re we anticipated originally doing it over the summer in, in, to have it ready for the opening of school in the fall. At right. this point, why not just take our time? I'm sure the parents won't like this, but why don't we just take our time, get it done right, and plan on doing it next summer to be ready for the opening of school? I can't I, imagine you want to do construction during the school year. I completely understand what you're saying, and trust me, I've said that at the building committee level. Um, the, the risk is escalating costs. Um, and having the, the project go up. Well, also, I think perhaps we should he hear from uh, Principal Roxby about that as well. Uh, but there's anticipation about the population increases, and, and if we don't get this started pretty soon, we're going to have bigger problems. I, 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 I mean, I understand exactly what you're saying. We want the project done correctly. And if it means that we have to wait to do it and get it the right way, will the parent population there be happy? No. Will we, uh, the Board of Education, be happy? No, because we have literally nowhere to put anybody. However, wait, I'm sorry, go ahead. we also don't want to do a project that's not going to suit our needs um, and is going to be wasteful of money. We think we finally got it right now. And if, we're, if you feel that you can move forward with this in a timely fashion so that we can award a bid um, and get started relatively soon, um, then the project is where it is. The, the problem now is, is that these bids that we currently have are only good for 90 days. And, if, and the farther off we put this, then we're going to start construction. I, I, in the, I, would, in I would just add from here that right. given the general state of the economy and what's going on right now, the chances of the bids being significantly high, meaningfully higher in 90 days is virtually close to zero. I would totally agree with you, except that I heard that argument over and over again with why we were going to get better bids, we get better bids, get better bids, and it didn't pan out that way. I'm saying bids that will be different from what you have now versus 90 days. That, that's all. Oh, oh, the 90 days. Yeah. Well, maybe so. I mean, but, I mean, but again, then you're working in the winter. Yeah, okay. Well, this is beyond this. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to Mr. Bolito. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I know that a lot of this is not the fault of the people sitting at the table in front of me, and you know, so my frustration is not directed toward you. Please understand. But this project came to us, and we have to be able to rely upon the information that's presented to us. That's the only option we have when we're deciding whether to fund projects or not. This particular project, we were given misinformation. Now, whether that was the result of a misunderstanding or deliberate manipulation of the facts, I don't know the answer to that question. But this was under a FEMA cap, and it turns out that a substantial amount of the project that we thought was under, that was, went toward that cap, turns out was not meant to go toward that cap. That change is everything. It changes the priorities. It changes what can be done, what can't be done. It changes the overall scope of the project. It's almost as if the FEMA regulations were a canard. They were used to deliberately manipulate this project to be under a certain number. And when we look at the facts now, you know, in re retrospect, we're finding out that, well, you know, that's not really the case, that a lot of this was driven by, you know, Mr. Flato saying you got to come in under 2.2, when a lot of that did not have to do with the FEMA regulations. So I, I don't know what the answers are going forward. I'm almost of a mind to say blow the thing up and let's start from scratch and do it right, to be honest with you. I don't know that that's a viable option or desirable, but that's how frustrated I am. We have to be able to rely upon the information that we're given, and when we, we can't do that, there's a serious credibility issue that impacts everybody in town, from the people who are at that school to the town boards and bodies. It's got to stop. Now, I don't say this to blame anybody, but we got to be able to rely upon the information that's in front of us. And obviously what we were given back in February was not correct. It was inaccurate. That can't happen again. I mean, it just, this has got to stop. And with this particular project, it puts the whole thing in jeopardy. And it's very frustrating for, for us because it makes everybody look bad. 
and it doesn't help the people of the Sherman community who are depending upon this thing being done. So uh, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Any other questions, comments from board members? Mrs. LeClaire? Yeah, I was going to say something very similar to what Rob just said, Sorry. so I agree <laughs> very completely with him. But I want to take it one step further, and that is we got this booklet of our new bond resolution, and Sherman's already been bid, so we've already spent the money. And so that's what's really frustrating is this is dated July 14th, and I'm not sure when you knew that this couldn't be done for that. But to me, if it could have come back to us earlier that you were having problems, we would have had more of an opportunity to make a better decision. Um, so I just find, maybe you didn't know then, and, but I find that very frustrating. And I clearly remember that the FEMA regulations were were the reason why we approved the amount we did that we didn't know that we could spend any more because it's always been very important to me that if we do a project we have to do it right and we have to do everything that needs to be done at that time so I would have clearly have approved more money and so, so I I just find this whole situation <coughs> unfortunate uh, no so do we just, just to follow up on Mrs. LeClerc we, we we actually, in, in the note sale of this past month, uh, did in fact borrow the full 2.2 million as, as part of that uh, note sale. Okay, so thank you. What is the implication of that from a practical matter as regards to where we find ourselves now? <laughs> you might as well just stay this time. <laughs> too dangerous here. <laughs> you have $2.2 .2 million to spend on the school. <laughs> okay. Or you have $2.2 .2 million that you could properly allocate someplace else if you chose to do that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you, you know, trying to absorb all of this and, and trying to work through the uh, Mr. Brockman's conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not a theory. <laughs> you know, basically our, our debt service is about 20, $25 million a year. Mm -hmm. And the only way to help keep taxes down is to keep expenses down. And debt service is one of those expenses. So we have a situation where the administration, uh, I can make my set of assumptions, is attempting to limit capital expenditures to, to reduce debt service a little bit, and laying out his five-year plan says, well, $2.2 2 .2 fits for this project. Turner, and we use Turner a lot, and there's other companies. I don't know why we don't spread it around, but we use Turner a lot. Turner said, okay, here's what you get for $2.2 I don't think they said you're going to, that they thought that they were going to, I mean, they're a reputable company. They're not going to say squeeze 4.4 .4 into a 2.0 million package. There'd be no benefit to anybody for that. Okay, so they said, here's, we think you can get this for 2.2. That came before this body. We voted for it. RTM voted for it. And the town bonded it. So there is a commitment to the school, to the parents, to the students, to the Board of Ed to do some work. And there's a commitment to spend $2.2 .2 million. And we really have two choices here. One choice is to say, OK, don't do A. Or the second choice is to, exp and, and, and by the first choice is don't do A, thereby stay within the 2.2. Second choice is, OK, we are more committed to and the first choice means you're more committed to the money than the project. If you're more committed to the project than the money, your second choice is, OK, you need A, B, or C. Therefore, and that will cost you an additional 200000 or 300000 and then have a further bond resolution for that. 800000 Well, no, it doesn't have to be 800000 It can be. I, mean, I don't think it ha looking at these numbers. I don't think it has to be 100,000. 
Um, well, that, that's because, like, for example, about. for example, um, in the <coughs> and again, it's a little it's still confusing me, even though I know the answer. Yeah, that's yours, because one um, A and one B are the same, and one one B though has zero for owner's contingency. One A has three hundred and two hundred sixty thousand dollars. You know, is that to make it equal three hundred thousand? Yes. So, what if you didn't want to make it equal three hundred thousand? Would you left the two hundred sixty out? I mean, I'm a little confused by the numbers. I mean, you, you mean not make it three? There either is a contingency, you need, or you, you mean either there either should be a number there or there shouldn't be a number there. The, re the um, reason that is set up like that is because we haven't checked references. So that's your delta. If you have to go to the next highest bidder. Hmm. Okay, so that's a bid contingency, is what you're saying, in essence. I don't know. They called it an owner's. So, so that's so now it's so now it's gone from three million, assuming that they're adequate, down to you know two point seven million, and then you could say take out the cafeteria, but I don't know. Maybe the cafeteria is. There's no money in either of them for the cafeteria. There, there is no cafeteria in, in option one. In option one. Only there's no ventilation. In the cafeteria. You mean ventilation? Ventilation. Gym ventilation. Thank you. So you take out the you can take out the gym ventilation, and you're down to, you know, 2.5. So you know, I think that's where more productive, and not more productive. I think this conversation has been very productive. Uh, but I think that might be where we go next. Is you know, I don't. You know, I don't you, think you, we're going to scratch. We can make. We have to make some decisions. Decisions are: are we going to do A, B, or C, and how much money does that cost? And, and or, or are we not going to do A, B, and C? Mr. Unless uh, somebody here wants to scratch the whole thing. Well, here, Mr. Mayor, here's. Um, I want to respond to your comments because I thought they were they were very well done, and I think that it it just ignores one concern that I have on that, and that is that it puts us in the position of managing what's the most important thing for the school. And, and the fact of the matter is, as I listen to the discussion at the table, whether it's casting aspersions at people that aren't here to defend themselves, whether it's conspiracy theory or, or whether it's saying that a vendor didn't do their job or, or whatever the heck it is, the only thing that's um, readily apparent is that there were a bunch of decisions made as this project was being scoped out that were made with less than accurate information. Whether that information was FEMA says we can only spend this much, the first selectman says we can only spend this much, this is important, this does count, this doesn't count. There was a lot of assumptions made or a lot of, and you know what that does, a lot of, or there was a lot of bad information at the start. So really the question that I have is, going back to something that maybe Mr. Bolito said or others, was this scoped right at the first place for the right intent to give the school community exactly what they deserve to get the best possible school we can at an appropriate price point? Um, when this was put together because what I would hate to do is to do somewhat what you're recommending not that you're recommending this but someone what you're talking about which is say hey we only want to spend 2.5 so don't do this and don't do that and just cut it down to 2.5 because I don't think the school community and the townspeople are best served by us micromanaging a project to that level I, I think we should start with what are you trying to accomplish with all the facts now on the table and how much is it going to cost? And oh, by the way, how does that fit into the five-year plan? How does that fit into the priorities of the Board of Education and what they want to spend their capital dollars on over the next few years? That's somewhat of where I'm coming out. Just to, That's my thought process as I sit here right now. And did you, I'm going to go to Mr. Brockfeld and then well, I'll come back. You, you want to respond to me, this? So yeah. yeah. Like, thank you. Thank you. I, mean, I think that's kind of what I said. I said we've had a discussion about whether yeah. it's dispersions or conspiracy, and, 
and, and, and, and the more meaningful quite as nice stuff is, that. you know, let's get to what we need to do. And that is, and, and, I, and, and the point I made is, we're either going to stick with the 2.2 and not have spend more money, or we're going to spend more. The only point I made in coming down to 2.5 was not to recommend 2.5, not to force a compromise, uh, which is a really big word nowadays, uh, but to just say, <laughs> not say one that, that's unfamiliar <laughs> to this board. <laughs> yeah. But but just to say that um, you know this could you know this could uh, this could be 3.0, or it could be 3.8, or it could be 2.7. 3.8. Right. Yeah, I have some ideas, uh, and we don't know. <laughs> New parking. Mr. Brockfield. I, I would just like to sort of sum it up, and, and I was basically you said what I was going to say, but one additional point, which I agree with you, Tom, is that the way I've experienced it here in my time on the board is that projects get sent to us by the Board of Selectmen after the Board of Ed makes their recommendation and so forth, and then we start acting on it and right. voting on it. I think we've had a very healthy discussion here about what's going on and what some of the issues are, and we really appreciate your coming forth, answering every question, you know, and so forth. But I would think that not to cut short conversation yeah. here, but I would think that the next step for us would be after the Board of Selectmen were to make a recommendation. If they come forward to us and say they want to do X, then we can talk about that. If they want to do X times two, we can just talk about that. Um, yeah. Anyway, I mean, it just. I'll, I got you, Jim. Uh, yeah. Does anybody else have anything to add to what Mr. Brockfield said? I don't even know why. Yeah. Why so. is this on our agenda? Because it was, it was, it's not, it's not, it's, it, it was not on our agenda. We were given the information. We were asked to consider this due to the time constraints that Ms. Iacono uh, alluded to earlier. And the first selectman approached me last evening at 6 o'clock about putting this on the agenda because there's a board of selectmen meeting tomorrow and there's a special RTM meeting on Monday night. So they wanted us to discuss this, possibly vote on a resolution and move this on down to, in out of order, and I agree with Mr. Brockfeld completely, to the Board of Selectmen, and then potentially to the RTM, so that the building committee, who's in a state of suspended animation right now on this, could move forward with their project in, in some type of uh, uh, time frame that they were comfortable with. So it's okay for us to vote first? It is on this, and we'd send it back to the Board of Selectmen, and they would do uh, it's, let's put it this way, whether it's okay or not, it's allowable. Okay, let me answer it in that way. Thank you. Mr. Walsh, I'm going to recognize you. I, I guess the You can pull the chair up to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> <laughs> Saddle up, partner. Yeah. Yeah. I guess my, um, in order to address your question, Mr. Brockfeld, and I, and I guess anybody, any of the other board members the same way, is I guess if you feel like you need leadership from the Board of Selectmen to go forward first. Um, I'd like to see a commitment from this board that if we meet tomorrow and come up with a decision and, and a route forward that the Board of Selectmen does, um, would you guys be willing to have a special meeting as early as next week so that we can keep this thing moving forward because, you know, we're trying to get this thing onto an RTM. Um, Monday, night, Jim, Monday night, so I guess you'd have to meet Thursday night mm -hmm. um, because I've, we've, I've already because we, we, we've tried to take a leadership role. Me and Mike have been attending these special project building committee meetings to get them back on track when this when we were first told about this issue. So Mike and I and Sherry have attended two of their meetings and have taken it to last night. And Mike and I left that meeting and immediately saw Mr. Flynn and asked him for the privilege of getting onto tonight's agenda that he could bring this up because we see the need to to try to move this forward with some of the concerns that were mentioned here tonight. So if you're looking for that first, if that's going to be a hold up to you to move forward tonight, then I guess we'll talk about it. We're going to come talk about it tomorrow. And, and, and we're going to come up with a decision, at least what our board thinks. But are you, are you guys going to be willing to turn around on a dime so that we can try to get this on the special RTM meeting uh, for Monday night? Well, only because you, thanks, you, yeah. address, you address me, so I'll just answer for myself. The, the answer to the second question would be up to the chairman to discuss the schedule and, and the board's availability. And the answer to the first would be that I think the answer is it would have to be one way or another because I just don't even think that the way this board is set up that we can negotiate out and restructure a 
school building project and vote on it. I, I'm, I'm, I just don't think mechanically we're set up to do that. We're set up, I think, to receive gotcha. proposals, debate them, and vote on them. I don't mean legally now. I'm talking about just structurally. So that would be my personal opinion. And then the other, other thing I'd mention in terms of scheduling is that we have a subcommittee on um, tomorrow night. Uh, uh, a very packed schedule with that, so we'll have to work around that as well. The audit subcommittee that Mr. Kiley is uh, is heading, uh, and uh, to direct uh, to answer your question directly, um, number one, yes, we would be willing to hold a special meeting on Thursday night. We've already, <coughs> I've already sent that communique out to the board earlier today that that might be an option. And secondly, I think people will find that this board has always acted in due haste to do that when asked. Uh, that doesn't mean because we hold the special meeting uh, that we feel we get the appropriate information at which we can make a decision. Uh, so I can't guarantee an outcome or the fact that there would even be an outcome if we ca called it for a vote on Thursday night. Um, this is an extraordinarily tight time frame given we just got information two hours ago or an hour and a half ago. And the Board of Selectmen hasn't even had the opportunity to decide what might be before us Thursday. So while I think we can pretty much say that there would be a meeting, I can't say that there necessarily would be a vote because I'm one of nine and I think we have to reserve all options at that table. Um, that being said, I'll go over to Mr. Bolito because he had his hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm not okay with this being done in such a short time frame. We're being asked to approve either 800000 or $1.2 million additional to what we've already done. And I've got this to back it up. That ain't enough. I mean, I'm sorry. It, it, to do this in such a short time frame with so little information, given that what's brought us here is misinformation in the first place, I'm not okay with putting this on a fast track. We need to have time to digest the information that backs up this additional request. We need to have the information. We need a bonding resolution. We have none of that right now. And I'm, I have no idea whether we're going to get that in the next two days or not. And even if we do, that's not adequate time to properly review it as a volunteer board and appropriate possibly 800000 to $1.2 million. I'm not cool with that. And I just want to make that very clear. Thank I th you. I think that's very fair, and it goes to my point that I can't guarantee a vote. You're right. I'm going to go to Mr. Kiley oh. and Mrs. LeClaire, because Mr. Kiley. Mr. Chair, yeah. At some point, if the point is that there's not Please, Mr. Tetra. Forgive me, just a point of information. If the point is that there's not enough information provided in the packet tonight, could someone please specify what information would be appropriate if you were going to make it worth your while to get together? Thank you. Mr. Okay. Kyle, and then I'm going to go to Ms. LeClerc. Okay. Um, if I may just quickly respond to Mr. Tetra's question, I think it would be a recommendation and a bonding resolution that coincides with that recommendation. Sure. Mm, what do you have, Mr. Hiller? I, I mean, I don't want to go down this path. You, you but don't have a recommendation from the Board of Selectmen yet. No, we have th three different draft bond resolutions. Okay, then, draft then three optional bond, then, bond resolutions. Right, then so that, that's not what I would call a recommendation and an accompanying bond recommendation or resolution. Um, this has been quite an eye-opening. Hmm? Is that all? Oh, I was just answering for myself. I'll defer to... Mr. Flynn on keep going okay we'll I come mean, back to this that. has been you know quite eye-opening and you know I I certainly I, I really feel badly for the Sherman School District because you know this is what's before us tonight it's you know it's it's had a troubled path it's incomplete it's inaccurate it's unfortunate and this it puts this body in a in, in very untenable situation here to attempt to, to deal with it on the fly by adding it to an agenda at night. So those are all very difficult roads that we need to go down together. Um, Mr. Mayor made a point, as he's done over many years that I've shared, worked on the board with him about the project before the funding or the funding being more important than the um, project itself. And it's a great question. And from, from my perspective, when I voted on this the first time, even though we thought we had the right number, and now we know we didn't, from my perspective, as always, it's the project being way more important than, than the dollars attached to it. Not that we're looking to spend money that we don't need to spend, but for me it's more important to do the project and do it right 
than it is to take the project and squeeze it into $2.2 million, which may or may not be possible or may or may not be the smart thing to do. So I would try to approach it from that perspective. Whether it ends up at 2.2, 2.6, 2.8, to me that's less important than making sure that the community that goes to the school gets what they need and to make sure that the project gets done once, gets done right, and that we don't have to have this conversation again. So that's how I would take a step back view of what we're trying to do here. And just quickly on a personal note, I can't be here Thursday night due to business. So unfortunately, if we do meet, I can't make it. Thank you, Mr. Kiley. Mrs. LeClaire. Oh, um, I wouldn't be comfortable on approving anything until I ha had, was confident that the building committee had gone back and revisited what priorities they had decided on and if that would have changed under a new funded number. And I think also the Sherman School community should have an opportunity to look at that also because they work together. Um, for a long time trying to come up with priorities on what was important and what they had to take out. And I think that's still really important and I want them to get the most project they can for, for their money because FEMA is still in play and we still can only do so much to Sherman School. Um, and then the other one is I'd also like to see that the Board of Ed has reviewed the project and any changes and that they're on board with whatever we approve. Thank you, Mr. LeClaire. I think that was uh, quite a good summary. I happen to agree with much of it. And Mr. Bolito and Mr. Tetra, I'll go back to an itemized list of the comments. And then we can decide, by the way, or you can decide, or Ms. Icona, what is possible for Thursday because at the end of the day, you know, a special meeting is presumably to vote on something, and if the items can't be done by that time, then there's no reason to hold a special meeting. Yeah. Understood. Here's the thing with this project. This isn't simply a matter of the project being over budget and allocating more money. It's a matter of the fundamental assumptions upon which this project was bought to, brought to us were incorrect. The priorities for this project, what was done, what was not done, were based upon facts that turned out to be incorrect. So. You're not just adding money to the project to get it done because the bids came in, you know, high. Everything about this project could be changed because of the information that we now have in terms of what is prohibited by FEMA and what is not. So while I, on one hand, want to get this done for the community at Sherman, on the other hand, I also don't want to cheat them out of something that they could have gotten if we had taken our time and done it properly. So I would rather, you know, take our time with it, get this whole thing done right, and get it done once, rather than doing a bum's rush in, you know, literally two days to allocate more money when perhaps the priorities have all been changed because of these factual revelations that have come to us now. So I want to get this done right. I think that's the most important thing. And if it means there's a delay, you know, I don't see what other option we have to do it right. Uh, but again, this is not just adding money this is not just about it coming in over budget. It's about the fundamental facts that this project was based upon being incorrect. So I think that makes it a little bit different scenario than perhaps the typical additional allocation request. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brockfell. Yeah. I, think, I think what you're doing over there, Tom, and correct me if I'm wrong, is polling the, informally polling the board to see whether or not it's even worth having this special meeting in such a short time. I could be wrong, but. Uh, you are. I, no, <laughs> no but, I, you're, not, you're not wrong, and I'm also putting together a list yeah, of, so, of so requests I, so, and, and my own thoughts. Yeah, actually. so for what it's worth, I just like to, th so I think it's important we all lay out where we stand. I actually agree with uh, Mary extensively, uh, and yeah. the more I think about it, and I'll add my own additional reason, which is going back to what I said to you, Pam, before, <coughs> which is that I don't really see the rush anymore, personally. Uh, I can't, I shouldn't speak because my kids don't go to that school, but I wouldn't want to have kids in school with a huge construction project going on. There's no way that this can be done for September. Uh, I, see, I see zero chance that the bids will come in higher 90 days from now than they will now, given the economy. So I'm leaning strongly, Tom, towards not wanting to have this thing rushed, not being forced to vote in two days, not forcing the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Ed to go on a frantic rush to put something together in front of us. I, I think we have a little time here. It's not up. It's not, it's not the way it should be. It's not what we'd like. But now that we've gotten to this point, 
I, I see no reason to, to, to do this big time rush job. Yep. So I would, I would put my, if you're now starting a poll, <laughs> I'd put me down into the category of not wanting to be required to vote on something uh, in a day or two. And there's a, there's a couple of things that bother me. Um, everyone will recall that for the last couple of months we've had a pending item uh, on the, the roof program. It's about an $800,000 item, $900,000 item. And we've kept that pending to see how that um, impacts the capital planning uh, program, the five-year capital plan that we're supposed to revisit in, in September. We've also kept it pending um, because of the ongoing uncertainty regarding the Metro Center project. I mean, it's odd that it's the exact same, or it's coincidental that it's the exact same number or darn close to the number that's here. Um, also, I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that um, I certainly wasn't comfortable with voting on this item tonight because there was no public notice. And the fact that in the past year or so we've had two referendums on items. One was for an $800,000 item and one was for a $350,000 item. And if this board or any other board was seen as not doing their due diligence, it's quite likely that, or it's, I don't want to say it's quite likely, it's quite possible that you could set yourself up for yet a third referendum related to an item related to increasing the funding on a project that had already been passed and therefore have a delay anyway um, because of that. Uh, because you would have to go through that process, which I think is, how many days does that take? 30 days and then, and then this and that. Six weeks. So you would have a delay anyway if this wasn't done right. Mr. Tetro, going back to the listing of items um, as to what would be needed to vote on this and putting that down, I think uh, clearly a bond resolution and a recommendation from the Board of Selectmen would be needed for something like this. Uh, secondly, I've heard that there would be a desire for a revisit by the Building Committee uh, given new information as to what the priorities should be. Third, I've heard that there'd be some a desire to have some communication from the Sherman School community. We've done that. As we've, to what we've their views are. We've done two of the, we've done a lot of this. Okay. And fourthly, I've heard the Board of Education point of view, as the Board of Education we've done uh, had a meeting well. on this. I can answer all of those points if you'd like. Okay. F uh, I don't remember I'm fourthly or fifthly or where I am. Fifthly, thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I'd like to understand the, um, more clearly now um, FEMA and as uh, Mr. Tetro had, had named somebody as judge, jury, he didn't say executioner, he did say judge and jury. Um, I think it would be beneficial to get something in writing on that given the fact that there seems to be some, uh, some issues regarding what was uh, said back in February and what you. was that. Well, y you guys might have it. We haven't seen no, it. No, no, I said we could get it for you. Okay. Um, so those are the items that, that I've heard from this board. Am I missing anything? Anyone? Mm -mm. Mr. Tetra. I might use your mic. Uh, just in response, just to be clear, uh, the bond resolution and board of selectmen uh, recommendation uh, is very possible for tomorrow. Uh, building committee priorities, uh, if we don't have those tomorrow, we won't have a resolution tomorrow. Um, the Sherman School Committee, basically community, community uh, just so you're clear, and I realize you weren't given this tonight, or at least I don't believe you were, uh, the Sherman School Committee has been very active in participating with the building committee over the last two weeks. We've had three meetings in the last three We've weeks. We've been participating from go. Uh, and have responded in writing to the building committee in terms of what their sense and their priorities are. So I think if you'll accept the, that written documentation as backup, that should help sure. clarify some of that. Uh, the Board of Ed, I believe we asked a couple of weeks ago for Board of Ed priorities and clarity on this. And, they, and they've been kept up to speed. The Board is well aware of what's been cut right. and what priorities yeah. are. The, yeah. what, Ms. Ms. Icona, all I'm trying to clarify is that yes. we have that, so I'm trying to clarify that we don't need a Board of Ed meeting between now and Thursday night. Are those, if we have that in writing, is that, is that, would I that be? I can speak to the Chairman. 
Would that I be don't acceptable? Know what I have in, I, I'd have to go back and get minutes. Yeah, that's a, I'm just trying to clarify with the Board of Finance what would be acceptable to them in terms of documentation for Thursday night. Uh, I think we'd definitely like to hear from the Board of Education chairman mm -hmm. on Thursday right. night. I'll speak possible? to the chairman. Okay. Um, and then in terms of FEMA, again, that the documentation has been done. There have been multiple meetings with Mr. Went, who is the literally the person responsible. Judge and jury. As it is for interpreting that. Uh, and we certainly can provide that uh, information. And potentially, if Mr. Went's schedule and you deemed it appropriate, we could ask Mr. Went to attend also. Okay. Mr. Belito. Thank you, Mr. Tetro. What are you going to offer in terms of documentation to back up the specific number that's requested? I know we have this sheet with some options, but I don't know where those numbers come from. Itemized list of this is what's going to be done for your $800,000 additionally. That I'm lacking at the moment. Yeah, but again, where is this coming from? Is this from the, is this the, based on the bids from the contractors? And it's this, is, this is it. Yeah, those are numbers so the, that numbers. contractors have agreed will do the work for, for 90 days that meet the specs that went out in the bid uh, as right, part so of you're the saying project. That this is binding? Yes. Yeah. Not until we sign a contract. Yeah. Right. yeah. But the bids are good for 90 days, correct? correct. That's yes. correct. All right, that's what I want to know. Thank you. Mr. Brockfeld. Quick, quick um, qu question. You said that we only got these two bidders because the nobody thought they could do the job for the cost that we were no, looking. No, 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 that was when we originally went out. We only got one bid. Got one we bid. re we rebid it. Oh, we only have two bidders. No, these no. The, be, what's presented to you are the lowest oh, bids. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. There's Thanks. three low bids. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. When did the bids come in? Uh, I think they're the open July 13th. 13th. Great. They were open by the purchasing director. Right, so about three weeks ago? Yeah. Huh? Mr. Tetro, what about uh, the context of the five year capital plan and where that stands and how this fits in? Because that's a concern of mine. I think simply that's what the workshop's about. And we've got several uh, options coming up in terms of what do we do with this, what happens with the train station, what happens with the roofing project. And I think that's what the workshop is going to be through. How much uh, in terms of. Yeah, you know, but how much do we have, if, if you re recall, I don't. How much did we have set aside that, you know, in Mr. Flato's presentation last year annually for the Board of Education? Do you remember the number? Uh, right off the top of my head, I don't. Mr. Hiller's been looking at the waterfall. Here, can you get that, Jim? I can get that. Uh, well, no, I, I think right Jim now. Brown has it. Here's what he had. He had $19 million from for 2011 to 2015. He was banking on $4 million in grants for a total of $15 million. That's what he had. So $15 million for four years. Up to 2000, from 2012 to 2015. Okay. And for 2012 to 2015, so that's three years. What about, did he specifically identify Sherman in here? That, that's what we had brought up right. earlier. That was my question. Have he did, but Dr. Title just disagreed. Right, and I, th I, think the, I think they came to agreement that it was not included, but I need to go back and double check that with Dr. Title. Yeah, because the problem here is you're running, you know, if this goes to $3 million, then your 15 is down to 12, and you've got three years left to go. Understood, and as I stated earlier, we are at your mercy. Well, there's, you're not at our mercy, you're at the, you know. Well, the, if we have to adjust, we have to adjust. What's that? What'd you say, Bob? <laughs> Bob what? Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Tetra. We'd I like to get an answer to that. I think as well. Yeah, certainly. I think that's part of the discussion we have as part of the capital workshop, though, too, in terms of how that's allocated out. Uh, no understood, but it. I want to get an answer as to whether it's included or not included and where th yeah, the issue could, that Mr. Brown. concern is, at least my discussions with various parties, I don't believe the Board of Ed and the uh, previous administration ever sat down to reconcile those numbers. They, we came out with differences out of the uh, mm -hmm. capital planning workshop a year ago. I know the Board of Ed worked to adjust their numbers but I don't remember uh, hearing about any reconciliation that was done. All right. 
we're going to need the chairman of the Board of Ed to come in and speak to that with you on whatever night we do this relative to do you guys realize what we're doing to the schedule here? Well, if he's not available, you're stuck with me again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Or you're stuck with us. Um, okay, so what's the flavor of the board, Mr. Mayor? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, if you look at option 1A, and if you delete the alternative three, um, and you delete the owner's contingency, you come up with a number that's 2.45 million. That's mm -hmm. just an information item. So as I sit here and listen, sometimes I'm thinking about a different meeting than some of us here. I think that everything that you asked for, you and Kevin, is what needs to be offered and provided, mm -hmm. is absolutely right on and correct. But as I've been listening to the people that are here tonight before us, it's, it seemed very apparent to me they've been having meetings, they're all aboard, they've given us a lot of thought, they've figured it out, they know what they want, they know what they, they've prioritized it, et cetera, et cetera. It also appears that they've been working closely and that uh, first Selectman Tre uh, Tetro and Selectman Walsh have gone to meetings, participated, and have a sense of responsibility f to the community, to the school district, uh, to, to this to the school and the parents and, and children of the school, and they want to get something done. Um, so based upon what I hear, what appears to be done, what appears to be, uh, and going back to Kevin's comment, it's the project, not the cost. Mm -hmm. um, I would say I am very ready. I could vote on this tonight, actually. But given the other issues and concerns of the other members of the board here, I think that um, I'm, I'm very supportive of having a meeting on Thursday, uh, contingent upon a re favorable resolution at the first, as, as contingent upon a resolution at the first selectman that would make a meeting on the subject appropriate. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? Does anybody else have any comments on a meeting on Thursday? Mr. Walsh, and then I'll take Mr. Tetra. Oh, Bob. Do, do we know who could be available? I, I know Kevin can't. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm gone. Thursday, I'm very iffy. Jim, please. First, um, through you, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask Mr. Special a question in regards to Turner, some questions that were raised here earlier. Are they going to be available tomorrow at the Board of Selectmen meeting? I mean, I know they weren't available on this short notice, but at some point they've got to come before some town boards and explain themselves. We paid them a lot of money. We keep asking about why they're not at meetings. Everybody else's, our architect shows up whenever we want them to show up. But the one person we've never been able to get at the table is Turner. And at some point, they've got to come before us because this board has raised questions, we've raised questions, and they're the only missing seat at the table. They're never there. <clears throat> the conflict was uh, basically <clears throat> Todd Ross had to babysit tonight because his wife works at night. And um, <clears throat> I can't speak for him. I can call him again tomorrow and ask him if he can be available tomorrow in the evening. That's the best I can tell you. Well, I'd like him to be at tomorrow's board of selectmen meeting that starts at 4.30. Hopefully that might fit into a schedule a little bit better. And what about anybody else from the company? Because right I, now at this point, some of the credibility of their company is being called into question. And that gentleman's got to have a boss or a supervisor or somebody else there. And with the amount of work that we've given that company over the last 10 years, I can't believe we can't get the attention of somebody. I'll give him a call. I, the uh, t uh, Ty Trick Ellis is Todd Moss's boss. I'll definitely talk to him. Yeah, could you remind him how much business that the town of Fairfield's given them over the years? Well, I mean, they might want to do that calculation. I, I mean, just I mean, it's just it's I, it just seems like we should be able to get. If if I had a client who gave me that much work and they called me, I'd be there. Yeah. Well, I don't know how much the town has given them over the years, but but certainly they have a responsibility to uh, back up their. Proposals and, and uh, all right. Um, so 4:30. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
In regards to the priorities, I've heard a couple of members here tonight talk, not, sh not sure what the priorities of this, of this uh, project are. And I, I think the priorities have always been kind of crystal clear in what those priorities are. And those priorities have always been for this school to have fresh air for the students, to have a good air quality, because currently we've been told by our, uh, that this building does not meet any of the codes for fresh air. We just had a determination of that by the head of our building department. We don't meet the code for fresh air. The fresh air that was designed to be brought into this building was done by a fan above each of the doors, which has been removed. So each of the classrooms has no fresh air. During the winter, when it's cold, this building is, is bottled up, there is no fresh air. And if we can't supply fresh air to these children, especially the ones who have asthma and other types of lung issues, we should probably consider giving them the option to attend another school and busing them to another school, but that's another option. Security, many of you have taken the tour and seen the lack of security that building has and the fact that you have to walk in. That has always been and there was always supposed to be a reconfiguration of the space. The lunch lines, because the school, we've added space onto it and it is basically capacities for that school is slightly less than 500 students, but there's one lunch line. So that has always been a priority. And respectful space for children to both see nurses and to have special education classes that are not basically on top of each other where there is basically no separation and no respectful space for either. Those have always been the priorities of what this project have been about. They're not very sexy issues but they are what the issues are. This, as they've tried to pare down this number to get to what the previous administration wanted this number to be, they have always held those priorities to, to, to be the things that they were trying to look at most. And I think by the fact, if you look at options, all the options, and you see what they made alternates, those alternates were only being brought in if there was extra money, if these bids came down below the $2.2 .2 million that were appropriated. So you can see, by the way they did these alternates, what was the priorities. Jim, I think, um, to your point, I think one of the people that spoke about the priorities uh, was myself. Mm -hmm. And I'll only speak for myself on, mm -hmm. this, on this point. When I spoke about wondering what the priorities were. My wondering what my trepidation wasn't that it was unclear to me what the priorities are as they currently stand, mm -hmm. but whether those priorities were based upon faulty information back when they were put into place. Because if you're basically told that you have a box and you can afford what this box is and that's the only thing you can get, your schedule of those priorities might be different than if you were told that box is a little bigger due to these code compliance issues and things like that. So it was, would, in hindsight, since there's no shovels in the ground, since there's no work having been done, would those priorities have been adjusted so that you could get a better outcome for the school community had what we know now been known back 120 days ago or whatever it was when the project was approved. Because what was very clear tonight was that there was a lot of faulty assumptions, poor information, miscommunication, whatever you want to say, when this project was originally defined. And I think this board from that point forward, and in fact a year ago when we started hearing about this, to echo something Mr. Kiley said, I think the board's always been supportive of supporting the Sherman school system, the school district, okay, and doing what's right for that school, but doing it in the right, in the most efficient, and the most effective way, and giving them what they need for that school. So I don't think, and anybody from Sherman here tonight, I don't think the discussion here is whether we do something. We've already shown through a $2.2 .2 million bond resolution that we want to do something. We want to make sure it's the right thing and we get the right outcome. And, and that's whether we hold that special meeting on Thursday night or whether we hold it a month from Thursday night. And I understand all of that. And 
maybe I would even support doing some more. However, I also understand the economic times that we're in. Right. I understand the questions that you're asking about waterfalls and the mm -hmm. fact that the more we increase this project, the greater the probability is the whole project gets shot down. Mm -hmm. And That's I take right. those realities seriously. And I, take, I see what the RTM has done. And I also see what the referendums you discussed. And the quickest way to have a referendum is to start expanding projects the and quick, start adding things on to stuff that wasn't there to begin with. And the quickest way to potentially have a referendum as well is potentially to have a vote in 48 hours and have this seen as being fast-tracked through the entire process. It's just a consideration. I'm not making a determination on that. Okay, but it's something that I'd be lying if I said it wasn't going through my mind right now is the fact that we're being presented with this that wasn't even on the agenda tonight. And we've had a two hour discussion on this. And now we're going to push it through, you're going to push it through the Board of Selectmen tomorrow, <coughs> and perhaps a Board of Finance special meeting on Thursday night, and perhaps a, a special meeting of the RTM that wasn't even called for this purpose to discuss another project that was over budget mm -hmm. on Monday night. Mm -hmm. The optics of that are not good. And I think that's a consideration that we should be taking into our thought process. I understand that's the thought else. process. I, don't, I, 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 I tend not to immediately jump to trying to govern by whether a referendum is going to be done or not. I mean, we've had this project before us for two years that we've been looking at it. So either I'm a quick study or I'm stupid not seeing all the stuff. But to me, the, the options really aren't that many. Um, I mean, we've, we basically have bids. We've sent this out to the marketplace. It was not managed well from the start, this project, in the f trying to force something down using a number and then trying to say, let's try to get this much stuff done. I did not think that's the way it was happening. I thought that's the reason we hired Turner to be a professional estimator on the job. Something got lost in that translation, which I think we all deserve answers to. However, here we are. And the question is, is do we still all agree with the project? And if so, these are the numbers. How much is there? I, I, to me, the, there's not a ton of analysis that can't be done over a 24 or 48-hour time period as long as the answers are presented. It's not new, new questions about whether this stuff is needed or not needed that we need to reanalyze. I don't think the priorities of the project have changed at all. So now it's like looking at the numbers. And are we going to either, one, cut some one of these major priorities off and stick within a number, to govern to a number, basically? Or are we going to accept the marketplace numbers and say we've got to either adjust it and, 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 and get the project done? Yep. So but I understand I your reasoning for not wanting to make a decision tonight. I understand that. I understand you wanting to follow the procedure and wanting the Board of Selectmen then to come to you with a specific number and ask all the questions that you want and have all this information that you want. But um, and I think there's no problem with any of the information that's here. I personally spoken after hearing um, uh, the Jim Wentz um, analysis, who is the FEMA compliance officer. He's been, I guess, he reports to the state of Connecticut and gets audited on the, by them on this specific fact, not only for school projects but for residential projects. So he is judge, I guess, and jury. He's the one they come down to. But so I don't think, you know, to the extent that he can be here, he'll answer all those questions. I don't think the priorities have changed. The Sherman community has been involved every step of the way, and I cannot tell you how they've bent over backwards for this project, including taking away things that they really want in order to govern to a FEMA number. They understand the realities of that. That, 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 that we're now hearing tonight might be a fictitious number. Might be a fictitious number by, yeah, maybe... There might be a half million dollars of play in there. It's just whether you, you know, we're we going to want to then take that extra half million but dollars of. The FEMA number is not fictitious. What's included in is the, the interpretation. Number. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's a frustration. It's been a frustration of mine because with these, and, these and, questions and have been asked point. for two these years are, and the answers keep changing. And, that, and that's my point mm -hmm. regarding a project that's taken two years. And, you know, you don't, and I'm not saying it in, in terms of a referendum. What I'm saying it is 
a likelihood to pass, mm -hmm. right? If you rush it through in 48 hours, what's the likelihood that the other body's going to be able to pass it in the, in the next? You know, it, it's, it's staging this thing appropriately. It's managing the process appropriately. It's making sure that all these answers are had. I've heard tonight we've got six items on this list, I think, Mike, that I listed down that we would want for tomorrow night. We don't, or for Thursday night. We haven't seen any of them right now. I've got the building committee views, the Sherman School views, the Board of Selectmen recommendation, the bond resolution, the FEMA written opinion, and the Board of Ed point of view on this. Right? Now, we've spoken to them. Don't get me the wrong way. But we haven't seen anything in writing on a bunch of this stuff is all I'm trying to say. And we would have to see that on Thursday night based on what I'm hearing from my board. Am I wrong? No, you're right. Yeah, Mr. Brockville. Thanks. I, I just want to uh, answer to, to Jim just one thing uh, on, on behalf of the board here that, you know, you listed when you sat down the list of priorities. We embrace those priorities here. I mean, I appreciate you repeated them, but you were kind of implying that was, these were priorities we should look to and, and, and think are wonderful uh, or worthy. But we have already done that. I just want to make that clear. That that is something we, we did voted it with on. the we, original $2.2 exactly, $2 million. Voted for $2.2 million to embrace those priorities. Our concerns are not whether or not we think those priorities are, are legitimate and worthy. We've already made that statement. Our concerns are about a whole range of other things that I won't repeat that Ms. LeClaire and Mr. Flynn, I think, very clearly stated. And I think we're very worried about rushing this thing through in 24 or 48 hours, how it looks whether we get everything right. And to me personally, to tell you the truth, on behalf of the Sherman school people, whether or not the RTM will pass it, given the mood that they're in and given what they're going to be talking about on the train station, uh, that's just my opinion. I think, I think it's playing with fire, but that's, that's a, above my pay grade. Well, the reason I talked about priorities was because there was two questions and where they want to hear what prior the priorities are and whether those priorities are the building committee priorities, which I think were very clear with what their priorities were in the scope of this project. That's and because what, we were, the Jim, that's were. because we were presented with three different options here and said, here's your panoply of what you can choose from. That's why that comment was made. The, the original comment was made. There's, hey, here's the three options. We're happy with either of the three. We'd like one. Uh, but we understand the economic realities. So we're like, okay, we're presented with three options here. Which one are you actually advocating for? Are you advocating for number three? Are you advocating for number two? Or are you advocating for number one? Right. That, that's why, I mean, go ahead, Mr. Stone, I think. I want to, no, please, Mr. Ramos, you stay. I mean, after listening to all this, I mean, my own feeling is I don't see what the real rush is. I really don't, and I just want to do it right. I don't want to have another project that comes back to haunt us that we, we might have done something wrong. I mean, we have, we have these facts. We have conflicting views. And uh, to wait another couple of weeks, I don't think it's so terrible. Okay. Mr. Mayor, you made, I think you made your comments No, Mr. Brockfeld, yours? Good. No, Mr. Brockfeld. I'm sorry. I think I've expressed them on Yep. Mr. Kiley, you're? I'm good. Mr. Bolino. I agree with Mr. Brockfeld and Mr. Stone. I don't see what the rush is. I want to get this right rather than get it done quickly. If it's the board's pleasure to do a special vote on Thursday, I'll you know do whatever I need to do to be here. But I just would rather get this right and not have to do it again. And I haven't heard anything, any compelling reason why this needs to be done in a 48-hour time frame. <coughs> Mrs. LeClaire. Um. Yeah, I, I, I don't see the, the urgency of it at this point. I think I, I'd rather t have, have it really laid out well first and understand what we're being asked to do and see more of the FEMA guidelines. And also, uh, what I still, still am a little concerned about is that the project was originally budgeted for, it, when it was estimated, it was 5.2. And, and I know the school and the building committee made hard decisions um, to get it down to this number. And I'd like to see them look at what those decisions were and if there was anything that could have not come under the femur so they could still have that uh, item or whether there's, um, they would 
move around what they decided was a priority because they couldn't afford something, so they took something else. I'm sure there were trade-offs on what was decided to be done. And so that, that's what my concern is, that we could have a better project if, if we took a little more time with the building committee looking at it. Mr. Brown? Would you like to answer the question about the rush? I, I, the priorities are what the priorities are. They are the administrative teaching kitchen spaces and its classroom ventilation. I understand what you're saying. I understand where you're going. But to the point of the waterfall, to the point of the money that were allocated at the Board of, Board of Education, we recognize that we don't have the funding, nor are we, let's be honest, if we're going to call a spade a spade, we, we're, there's no way in heaven's earth we're going to get 5.2 million dollars to get everything that we want to get over there and you're not going to be able to pull out the majority of that to meet your FEMA cap oh, so yeah, so yeah. we've gone through this and I'm sorry that I'm I'm getting frustrated at this point but we, we've been at this for two years we've been at this at the building committee level for six months and for me personally this has been incredibly frustrating because I bought into if we take it down and we redefine the scope and we do it, that, that, that we'll probably get bids that work. I bought into it. And so did Jerry Keough. And I can speak for him because we went on the record. There are other members of the building committee that knew all along that this was never going to work this way. And I really don't want get to get caught up in a political firestorm because we set our priorities. We can get you every single piece of that information for Thursday night. If you don't want to take action, I certainly respect that fully. I said that from go. I came here as humble as I could and explained to you where we were and how we stood. But the priorities, I can tell you, are not going to change. They are to get the administration security pieces in place. They are to get fresh air intake in place. That's where we are. That's what we need. That's what we desire. That's what we want as a board, as a building community, and as a building committee, and as the Sherman PTA. We have documentation that we can give you on all of that. All of that. And again, I apologize for my frustration. I realize this is the first time any of you are hearing this. It's just we've been doing this for six months, and when I tell you we've been banging our head against the wall, we've been banging our head against the wall. And I personally thanked the Board of Selectmen yesterday for coming in and being a part of the process with us because it's been so frustrating at our level. And that was one of the reasons why we're here this evening as fast as we could get here to explain to you where we are. And, and I said from go, we're at your mercy. If you're not ready to act on this, you don't feel like you have enough information, I completely 100% respect that. So does the building committee. We, we get it. Um, it's just frustrating. The priorities aren't going to change. That, that's all. Go ahead. Some of these options that we're being given are taking out some of your priorities. And so that's why, like, for the ventilation for the cafeteria, right? Am I? The, what we would love to have from the school community is option two. That's the full scope of what we were really after and what we've been lobbying for. It's $1.2 million. What we knew we asked for in January is going to cost an additional $800,000. So we didn't want to come back and get accused of scope creep and say you guys are asking for something more than you originally wanted. So that's why the $800,000 is there. If you're asking what the priority is from the building committee, and I think Rich will agree with me, it's the option to $1.2 million. That's originally what we wanted. We scoped it down. We came back. You're, you're looking at the $800,000. <laughs> and, but then, and then the only other point that I had is that because we've already taken on this project, I'd much prefer to do this project and get it right now than take on a whole other project. If another project has to be delayed a year, that may happen. But I'd rather do this one properly and get everything that we really need out of it than say we have to cut like. $200,000 because we have to fit, fit it into this budget. And that's, that's what my concern is. I want to make sure we, we meet your priorities. I'm going to go back to Mr. Kiley. He's got a follow-up to yours, and I'm going to go to Mr. Brown. I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I hear everything you're saying. I really do, and I, and I greatly respect that. But Mary asked a great question. I mean, what, what was clipped that you'd like to have? 
um, because if I read down option 2A or B, we get back to 3.4 million, which would have the supporter of option 2A or 2B sitting here looking for $1.2 million to pick up the extra couple items up top that are, that are in the schedule, not $800,000 for options that don't pick up those extra items. So while I agree there's a basic set of priorities that's been more than laid out here, and I get it, there are still things the way I read the schedule that fall into that maybe next category of we really would want to have these things, and they're important things for the school, for the children, for the community, I get all that and I support all that. And quite frankly, if a case can be made for them, I would support the 1.2 million to go to 3.4 and put those things in the project versus only going three quarters or two thirds of that way to $800,000, taking it to $3 million. And I think that was kind of Mary's question. Right. Um, which I think is still unanswered. I, I, I guess I'm not understanding you. What we Am want I? is option two. I'm going to go to Mr. Brown, who's been. I think what we have here, maybe this is for my clarification. We, we had a print, mm -hmm. and Al Kelly and you showed us this print on this sketch back in February, correct? This is the print. Mm -hmm. This print is, is option one. That is correct. Right? Yes. And you thought this was going to be $2.2 million. That is correct. What you're saying now is That's three. this is, we were forced, what's the matter? Go ahead. I was looking at the clock. I'm sorry. I'll get back to you in just a second. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. You you feel you feel that you were forced into this because of the 2.2. This is not really what you wanted back then, but you said it fits in the 2.2 million. It's acceptable. That's right. We'll live with this. Yes. But since you're here anyway, you said, well, <laughs> if I have to come back, I might as well say, you know what? What we really wanted was option two. Yes. And then, and then there's the priorities, that's, right? Mm -hmm. That's my point. Okay. So on Thursday, if we were going to come back, well, tomorrow, if you're going to sit in front of the selectmen, you're going to ask for option two. Correct. Yes. And you're hoping that on Thursday, what comes before us is a bonding resolution for 3.4. Correct. Okay. So, I mean, with all that said, I mean, I'm not sure which way the vote will go, but I think it's worth, for me, it's worth listening to on, uh, on Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Tetra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a couple things. One is that um, I think in, in listening to the comments that Mary made and, and Mr. Bellino made, uh, if you need those questions answered, they're not getting answered in 48 hours. So it, it, I think it, before you leave here, you need to decide if that's the question. Because if it is, uh, no sense scheduling it then. We'll just reschedule for September. Mm -hmm. And let's not waste anybody's time. Not that those aren't worthy questions that, that wasn't, but just if you need this committee to go back and rethink through everything from the 5.2 back, that's not going to happen, certainly not going to happen by the Board of Selectmen meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we wouldn't be presenting that. Mm -hmm. uh, second, uh, you may want to consider if you are going to do a Thursday meeting, a public notice sometime early tomorrow, to your point, yep. make sure that it's properly noticed if you would potentially vote on that. Uh, one of the pieces I think that's missing here and that I think might be helpful in the discussion, um, especially to Mr. Walsh's point about looking at the, uh, uh, what the estimates were by uh, Turner, is it would be nice to have an extra uh, column on that chart that specified what the estimates were alongside what the bid items came back at. Uh, and then I think that uh, it's been addressed here, and it, it, uh, I think it should be clear, uh, and certainly should be clear by tomorrow, what the building committee recommendation is. I think you specified that here, but we want to be, want to have that reinforced tomorrow. Uh, and then also, I think to the uh, board's question, certainly ours tomorrow would be uh, the timing options. What happens? Uh, is this still a two-phase project? Uh, do we get any economies of scale if it's one phase uh, and done next summer? Uh, and what the timing is now. If it's voted on Monday night, what does that let us start and when does that let us start versus if it's voted on in late September? I think it's always going to be a two-phase project because of the, uh, <clears throat> the timing. Right. 
timing on ordering uh, HVAC equipment, the lead time that's necessary, and the fact that you can't place that equipment while you're in school session, while school is in session, has to be done uh, during the summer period. I'm going to thank you, Mr. Tetra. I'm going to go to Mr. Belito real quick. I'm glad you mentioned that because that leads me to a question again about the timing. Originally, when we approved this, the what was contemplated was that the bulk of the work would be done during the summertime before <coughs> the kids are back in school. Now, obviously, that's out the window. When, assuming the best case scenario that this gets approved within the next several days by all the town boards and bodies, when are you going to begin construction? And have you thought about how disruptive that's going to be to the students in school when you're talking about, you know, ripping up the ceilings for HVAC, dealing with the administrative area, which is where all the kids are coming in and out of the school? How, what contingency plan have you made for a construction timetable that happens during the school year with the kids there in school? We, we, we spent a lot of time on that. We, yeah. We have a very strict timeline. We have a very big protocol. We will be happy to provide you with that information. Again, we went, we went, we went, we went back to the PTA. They bought into this. They understand, and we told them this is a big consideration. You are now moving to occupied renovation. Is this what they want? Is this what you want? And the overwhelming response was yes. I'm glad you brought up that point I think, too, I think you talked about the the PTA approving it and having you know being a PTA member myself. I know that usually the PTA is about. 15 or 20 people in a school community of several hundred. We're doing this during the summertime when a lot of people aren't around, and I'm just not sure how the vast majority of parents at the school are going to feel about this being done during the summer when nobody's we, around. We met talk. a long time ago we, when we knew that we were moving to occupied renovation. The PTA was informed of this, I think, in the end of May, beginning of June. So you're saying that the school community at large knew about this? Yes, there have been communications going out. I'm getting whispered in the ear from the director of the elementary education. The answer to that question is yes. Okay. Now, if you knew about it back then, why are we just hearing about it now? I would be happy to speak to you about that offline. Actually, that was pretty public. It's a timeline issue. We knew. We knew that it was, it, we knew. I, is that because of the zoning thing that propped up? Yes, and we knew that we weren't going to fit into it. All right, it. that's all I wanted to know. That's fine. That's an explanation. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Um, it's, it's kind of like I, for, for a while there, I thought I was uh, sitting at a Board of Ed meeting. I mean, it's like, you know, Board of Ed is pretty much kind of a group of people that are pretty much pro board, you know, pro education, pro building, pro spending, pro, you know, and this, that's the people that are interested. People are, we're the Board of Finance. We're supposed to be monitoring and watching the finances. We have some people who have come here and said, we kind of want to spend a couple of bucks more, and we got a couple of board members saying, well, don't you want to even spend more than that? I mean, maybe you got some better ideas. I mean, how about, you know, gold-plated faucet or something? I have no idea. You know, we're losing track of stuff here, and I'm not sure why. I mean, we're the Board of Finance. We're supposed to be thinking about the dollars. They're the Board of Ed. They've come and said, here's what we want. It's very clear. They have their alternatives, one, two, and three. That's one. Two, secondly, thing. what's interesting is the Turner was like 40% under on the 2.2 million. Well, if they were 40% under on 2.2, maybe they were 40% under on the 5.2. Maybe the 5.2 is eight. You know, so, you know, so that's just, so I don't, maybe. I don't know what that has not, to do I'm with I'm not ready to spend eight things. million on Thursday, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is the, we're talking about 3.4 is a given number. The, um, if, you, if you look at this document, and if you take out alternative number three, and if you take out owner contingency, which isn't necessary if Salsay passes the vetting process, you're not looking at that amount of money. You're only looking at 2.5, because that takes $4.5 million out of it. Um, 5.5, excuse me. That takes, I used, I, I slipped a digit there. That takes 288 plus 260, 290. Five, that reduces by $550,000. Um, so the total funding is reduced by 550. If yeah. if you were if you were just to chop, the, the 260 comes off automatically if Salsay is vetted properly, and then you make a decision on the gym ventilation, which is alternative number three. Um, 
option one. But they want option two. Right, I'm just saying that you can, there's, even if it's option two, you're still saving the 260. I'm just saying if you take out the alternatives. In other words, the alternatives are added on to the, but they have priorities, if I understood it. You have your priorities. And then they said, we also have some alternatives. And the alternatives are numbered, one, two, and three. I assume that's in an order of priority. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't know why it's done that way, but. Okay, so it's not an order of priority. No, yeah. But, but the point is, you know, summarizing, we're the Board of Finance. I don't think it's our job to be sitting here saying, do you need more, do you need more, do you need more? That is their job. Our job is to evaluate what they want and, and, and make decisions on that and, 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 be, and, and be thinking about the money and the dollars and the taxpayers. Um, you know, we had two comments here. You know, one is we don't want to rush it to the RTM because the RTM might vote it down. We're saying, oh, but maybe we should think about it longer because we might want to put more into it. I, I think that's a little contradictory. So my, my, my two points are, one, it doesn't have to be exactly what it is because you have 260 in here that if so I'll say that's, which I'd like to request the chair to add that to requested documentation if we do meet on Thursday to have that vetting completed. By on the 260, if it even makes it through the no, Board of Selves. On Selves. Sal yeah, the reason yeah. 260 is in there is if they have to leave Selves. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, they can't do that in two days. I, maybe they've already done it. We don't know. Yeah, I see a, a shaking of a head. So. But, you know, I mean, it's, I, mean they, I don't know who they've called, who they haven't called, if they've started calling, who they know. I, I know nothing. But that would be good information to have as well. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, he, here's where I come out. I, I allowed everybody else to say where they came out on the, on the meeting on Thursday and, and things of that. Um, certainly, Mr. Mayor wasn't uh, speaking about myself when he said, I'm worried about the RTM because maybe we want to spend more money because that's not what I said. Um, what I'm interested in doing is whatever we do for this project, which this board has already indicated we support in terms of the $2.2 million vote, we want to give it, whether it be in front of this body, which is my responsibility, or in front of the RTM, which is their moderator's responsibility, the fairest hearing possible with the best available information. And the one thing I can say from where I sit as regards this project is that's the one thing we have not had, is the best available information. And Ms. Iacono expressed her frustration earlier uh, it's six months. Imagine our frustration in 48 hours and having being forced to look through documents uh, and actually not even having most of the documents and being asked to presumptively schedule a special meeting uh, to vote on a project in 48 hours that hasn't even passed the Board of Selectmen uh, on something that we had passed six months ago or four, five months ago where now it comes that we had incomplete or inaccurate information. All that being said, personally, uh, putting aside my concerns over whether it gives us a better or worse opportunity for the project to get a fair hearing further down the line, um, if all these items that I uh, listed previously um, that have come from my colleagues on the board are ready by the end of the day tomorrow so that we can review them before the meeting. I would be prepared to hear this at a special session on Thursday night myself. And again, that's putting aside my issues as to whether that's the best thing or not for the project as we move forward. Um, but that's saying would the information be available for us to review in a comprehensive way. I also think Mr. Walsh is 100 percent right as it relates to Turner Construction and their necessary availability in order for us to move this forward. That's from, uh, from my point of view. Um, with that in mind, there's one question that I need to know before we make a final decision on this, and that is, what is the actual impact of us not meeting uh, on, Wednesday, on Thursday and this being delayed till our September meeting, which is a September 2nd meeting. What is the impact on the project 
Because, by the way, even if we pass it on Thursday, the RTM and whatever we pass, I have no control, we have no control over whether the RTM takes that issue up at their special Monday meeting or not. They could decide not to do that. The problem <clears throat> is that we have a time factor and that these, <clears throat> these bids are good for 90 days. And by the time you go through all the uh, bodies that have to review this, you would probably exceed the 90 days. We probably have or we have. I mean, no, no, you, no, you haven't yet, but there's a possibility that you would. Well, let's do the 90 days. You can't because July, October 13th. October 13th. So this would be well under the 90 days because you would have approval from us, presumably, for whatever it is on September 4th or September 2nd, 6th, whatever. It's only, it's only a date. September 6th. And then the RTM would take this up when? Fourth week of September. The September 26th. September 26th. And it would allow them time to go through their subcommittee process, which I'm presuming they would want to do. So again, it goes back to if these bids are good for 90 days and we don't need to make a decision right now, and it would allow the process to work appropriately, why do we need the special meeting on Thursday night? But their bids are binding for 90 days, no? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what, that, what their prices and stuff may be architected. Yeah, 90 days, but uh, isn't there a 14-day waiting period after the RTM yes, sir. Uh, enters uh, before you can enter? Okay, and the date? And the date. October, it takes you to October 11th. October 11th. <laughs> You're kind of very thin, but... <laughs> It's still within the 90-day deadline. It's, the ni it's not so much the 90 days. It's whether or not you start to get into winter construction. And as you know, as you get into winter construction, that can force your costs up through all different kinds of issues. That do was you have a firm bid, though, no? Yes, we do. Yeah. We have a firm bid. Yeah. Let me just ask, is there, is there a clause in the bid? Just, I'm just concerned about contingency funds and that type of thing. That's all. Mr. Brown? You know, is there any, a lot of times these bids have a way out anyway within the 90 days, right? There's a clause at the bottom of the bid and they can change the price. I see these bids all the time. When we do work with Dashfall or with Roofers, there's always, I mean, they can raise the price whether they're, in the, in, whether they're within the 90 days or not. No, I defer to Mr. Special. I don't, I don't, this is not my area of expertise. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yes, you're correct. You, you can renegotiate that with them. Right. Mr. Braxa. I, I just want to repeat what I, I think to some extent what I said before, but also amplify what I think you're getting at a little bit. The, Pam, was, you, you guys are both very honest about what your intentions are. On, within less than 48 hours, we're going to be asked to vote on a f more than 50 percent increase in the bonding that we already approved previously. We've been told that on one hand by Mr. Brown, who I know is extremely talented in his area, that these contracts, the 90-day thing is at best a little squishy. And, uh, and at the same time, I think that it's uh, virtually zero probability that the prices will go up anyway. I, and we've heard that even though I agree it would be very tight, we can do this in, with the September meeting and still theoretically meet the deadlines even though we don't think the 90 days matter. I, I just cannot believe that we're rushing like maniacs on a potential 1.2. And, and to top it off, this 800,000, I think. No, they're saying they're going to come in for 3.4 million. They were very honest my, about it. That was my very honest, and, and I appreciate that. Yeah. And, this, and we haven't even discussed how this affects the uh, bonding for the town, mm -hmm. what it does to the waterfall, what it does to the priorities for the Board of Ed for their future uh, mm -hmm. uh, capital needs. I, I just cannot believe that we're cons uh, considering this kind of, of literally almost like maniac kind of behavior among all these boards in such a short period of time when I don't really think there's a ne necessity to do it. That, I'm trying to get to that, to your question as to whether there's a necessity to do it or not. I haven't heard any. Yeah, because, because I'm, 
And the only reason we considered it is we were asked to consider oh, it because we were told that it was a, an emergency well, situation. Was, no matter what, it was valuable to have this conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mr. Tetra, can we get your views on this regarding the timeline, considering we just walked through it? Do you have any views on it? Yeah, I, I think that as, as listening to the feedback from the board, I mean, if, if we had this to do all over again, uh, I'd ideally like to see a much tighter presentation, much different presentation than you got tonight. Uh, when we were uh, left last night, or when uh, Mr. Walsh and I left the meeting last night, we were looking at, at a number of, of bids that had come in, and, and we're looking at something in the three, four hundred, five hundred thousand range over the two point two. Uh, looking at one point two, uh, that's a much bigger number. Uh, than what uh, I had contemplated coming in. Um, I think that, that I'd like to see a more complete package. I think that we had, we had developed the waterfall chart uh, by this board, um, I'll say a year ago, just to, to give it a time frame. I think what I'd like to see going forward on any type of bonding project is an updated chart along those lines so you can see what the impact is over what the um, debt service is we've been approved for the last few years. If we have pa pockets in there where we've approved and um, I'll call it an allocation. So let's say the Board of Ed had a, a $5 million year allocation. We'd like to see how this comes out of that uh, so that you know that we're not stepping over that and you know we're not changing the projected tax rates that we're looking at over the next few years. Uh, so I think all the questions here have been raised very well. I think you also, uh, you know, Maybe, uh, and I think we did ask for it specifically in terms of what's the timing, when does it start, how does it fit. Uh, I think this project originally was kind of a one big phase project. It did change last spring to two phases. I don't, uh, as I remember, I don't believe that was done for uh, economies. Uh, that was, we were kind of backed into that because of certain timing things that hit. Right. It was, it was the, uh, I, I, I didn't mean to get into that, just okay. if my memory's close, just. Okay. Um, so I think that as much as the, I'm going to compliment the building committee for having spent a tremendous amount of time over the next three weeks, I think the Sherman community has been behind that at each step of the way. As I look at your board, and, and Mr. Flynn, to your point, you haven't seen that presentation from soup to nuts. And I think to Mr. Brackfell's point, looking at an increase in 50 percent potentially as a recommended option over this, you need to see that. To, to uh, Ms. LeClaire's point, um, I, don't, I think the, the building committee is pretty clear and they don't need to necessarily go back and, and revet every single option in that. Yeah, I didn't but think they I, needed to, but I just wanted to know that they considered No, I, 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 think, I think that, that you still need a better presentation on how that went through. And I think to Mr. Walsh's point, um, stepping through these costs as they came back with a comparison to what the original estimates were would help clarify what changed, what the difference was. Uh, I agree with Mr. Brackfeld again that, that I don't see the economy changing in the next 90 days, at least not for the better. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, potentially waiting to that September time frame Getting this back to you with a more complete presentation at that point buys uh, the building committee time to do a more formal presentation. If this were just a, an incremental increase on that, that's one thing. If we're going to increase it 1.2, I think we need to have that nailed down better for both the Board of Selectmen uh, and for the RTM. And I think it would help, uh, Mr. Flynn, as you pointed out, for the RTM to go through their committee process. Uh, that raises their comfort factor. As much as you all have talked about your comfort factor uh, and certainly not getting the documentation, which is no fault of anybody's given the timing we're working on, um, but to give you all a chance to raise your comfort factor as we go through that with more complete information. Thank you, Mr. Tetra. I appreciate the candor and the comments. Mr. Walsh, did you have anything to add? Then I want to wrap this up. Yeah, I, I would still prefer to go forward full speed ahead. Um, we're entering a strange time. I mean, um, I'd like to get everything heard as soon as possible. I don't think it's a problem getting this board the, um, uh, the information that they need. I'm fearful of going to the end of September with this. 
Um, I've seen the RTM take a Tomlinson project and have five or six meetings over it. So I'm not confident. And then now, now we're going to get into the silly season, the political season, of an election where every RTM member, some board of finance members, our entire board is up for election. There's going to be all sorts of posturing. No one's going to tell me that that's not going to be the case. It is. So I'd like to, I think it's, we have an opportunity now. It's going to involve extra work on all of our parts to hear this, get all this information out. The RTM, I know, is, is, is fighting to try to get this on their special agenda. And we just try to move it forward and deal with this one problem as soon as possible. Uh, I don't think the information is all that complicated. Once we understand the, the issues, we'll get Jim Went here on the FEMA issues. We'll, we, we can get through it. The numbers are the numbers are. We have the numbers. There are all the bids that we have. Yeah, I and I think we can get through it. And I, it would be my preference to still try to expedite this matter. And I know I'm going to express to Mr. Tetro that I want to go full bore with this tomorrow at the Board of Selectmen. What you guys decide to do, I can't really influence except to ask you to, 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 to try to stay on track, to invest the extra time and the extra effort. And I know you've had more meetings, especially coming through this budget, and you guys have spent more time on things than probably any other Board of Finance has done. Uh, but I would, uh, it was my preference to st stay on track. You're, you, you're, you're focused on this issue right now. I know me and Mike are focused on going to three extra meetings on this thing at the Special Projects Building Committee. Um, the information's here. It's not like we're going to be getting a whole bunch of new information and just try to get to a solution to this matter. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. A um, couple points on that. Uh, I'm not at all concerned about extra meetings or extra time related to that. My sole um, objective is to make sure we, whenever an item gets on our agenda um, that the item gets a fair hearing and that the uh, decisions are made with the best available information and that my colleagues uh, feel comfortable in their ability to make the decision within the time frame required. Uh, of lesser concern to me but uh, most assuredly a concern is to respect the process of the boards that come after and before us and to ensure that the RTM have the ability to follow their process and get their questions answered uh, so that they feel comfortable in what they're being asked to vote on. And those are the only things I can control or at least try to control. Um, or that we can try to control as a board. Um, given that we're within this 90-day time frame, even if we play this out, um, and given the sentiments of the majority of my board tonight, that it have indicated their preference uh, to have this go through a deliberative process and to follow the, the uh, more cautious um, path of bringing this up in September, I will say I'm leaning towards not asking for a special meeting on Thursday night based on what I'm seeing is the flavor of my board. Um, but let me consider it a bit longer if you guys would allow me to. I think is there any other questions, comments, or concerns we want to raise on this issue tonight? And I do want the public to have an opportunity. Does anybody have anything they would like to add to that? Can we ask, I want to open this up for the public. I want to first of all thank you. It's been a very late night and I thank the public for staying for this. I can imagine many of you are here specifically for this item, at least I hope so. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to get up and, sp and speak, please, please feel free. Just can we come just forward. say thank you on behalf of the building committee for hearing us? Well, I think we owe you a thank you as well. Um, first of all, um, we know how much work you guys have put in. Um, we also know um, how much frustration you've had, um, as evident by tonight. Um, right. So we want to thank you for that. It hasn't been the best of circumstances. And we're on the same team here, and we want to make sure the project is done in the appropriate fashion for, uh, for the town and for the, the kids of, of the school district as well.
We so, appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have the uh, any members of the public want to say anything to this project? Feel free, please. <laughs> We, th we thought it was a war of attrition here, and we had you. <laughs> oh, we were hanging in there till the end. <laughs> I'm Eileen Roxby, the principal at Sherman. So I want to thank you for having uh, taking the time today to put us on the agenda, yeah. um, and in such short notice. And um, I would like to thank the board of selectmen and the committee for really working very hard to um, try to solve the problems because they know how desperately we've been wanting and waiting for this project. Um, we are ready to mobilize if that happens. I mean, if the project goes through and we're, we, have, we have plans in place, we've met with people, we've um, talked to our all constituents, st students, parents, uh, teachers, we are ready to go if the project is, is, is approved. Well, remember, there's still a $2.2 .2 million project approved. I know. So. <laughs> uh, and I thank you for, um, uh, for making sure that we get the things that we need um, because this project, as you know, um, as you, because many of you have been there, we we really had to pare it down tremendously, and so we're not getting everything that we wanted for sure, um, and not even everything that we need, but certainly the most important things that we need. So uh, we went through all that pro all that process and over time, and um, and the parents that you see here um, supporting this project have been at meetings, RTM subcommittee meetings. Uh, Board of Ed subcommittee meetings, you name it, they've been there. They have um, done their due diligence to make sure that this project doesn't get off track. And you know what? We're going to still hang in there no matter what you decide. So we just want to let you know we're, we're in it to win it, you know, and we want to get it done. But, um, you know, whatever happens in the next 24 to 48 hours, we're going to be there. So, uh, but thank you all for taking the time to, um, to get this uh, approved. And thank you, and thanks for staying. And, and please don't, if we don't, if we decide not to hold a meeting on Thursday night, um, don't at all consider that putting the project at risk. It's just a matter of timing and making sure we make the right decision. It is in no way uh, representative of not having support, okay? I, I just want to be very clear on that. It's just a matter of making sure the process is followed and we get to the right decision uh, as opposed to a rushed decision. So are there any other questions, comments, or concerns from the public on this? Please, sir. Please state your name and address when you get up here, too, as well. Steve Baker, uh, 22 Charles Street. I'm the uh, president-elect of the PTA at Sherman School. And I want to thank you again for all your time and uh, that you spent tonight and all the other bodies that, at the time that they've spent as well. Um, just one quick thing I'd like to add to what uh, Mrs. Roxby said was that when you consider whether or not you are going to fast track this decision or not, one of the snags this project did uh, run into earlier was a lead time problem where we expected one item to be coming in in four to six weeks and now the lead time is expected 14 to 16 weeks. So putting this project off any further than it has to be can really run into pro a problem even getting it done next summer. So I would appreciate all expedience on this if you could. Thank you very much. Thank you very I much. I appreciate that. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Please. Um, <clears throat> Meredith McCormick, Fairfield Beach Road. I feel like I couldn't sit there and not say anything. Um, I can't believe that when I invited you all into Sherman two years ago, we're still sitting here talking about it. Yeah. And uh, I just appreciate you all spending so much time on this tonight. Um, I think one of the things why the Sherman community would like to get this moving, if at all possible, is uh, as everyone knows, our school is crowded, overcrowded, and it's going to be m even more so coming this fall. Uh, the specialists that work with the students are working with them in closets. And just, um, you know, all of our space issues, the faster we can get that addressed, I think the better it'll be for our community. But we certainly respect you. We respect um, your process. And I think we couldn't agree with you anymore. We want to get this done once. We want to get it done right. And just sitting through all these meetings for the past several years, and you all have done this longer than I have, I've seen a lot of things kind of maybe not get done the way I would like to see them get done. So I think that's one thing we all agree on, that let's just get this done, get it done right, and get Sherman finished and not coming before you again in the future. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. 
Um, one question on that. Um, by not doing, but by not having the meeting on Thursday and not pushing this forward, this wasn't going to be done for this school year right now anyway, correct? No, it was. It was. Well, it was originally, but then it was pushed off. It still was. It would have been. We would have, we would have gotten. Do you want to come up and talk about that? How could it? Yeah, but it's August 2nd now. We were going to, we were going to do an occupied renovation. Um, well, you we could still do an occupied renovation, right? But, it, but we, would, we would have had administrative stuff done. We would have been uh, ready to move into appropriate teaching spaces by December and starting the new, new semester in January. Starting, with starting building at what time, though? August now. We have our offices, uh, key uh, teaching spaces all packed up. There are a lot of spaces are in boxes right now that normally would not have been put in boxes. We directed teachers in June to completely pack their rooms up or specific uh, learning and administrative spaces. So we have uh, portions of our school at Sherman that are boxed up that normally wouldn't have with the anticipation of uh, construction starting in August for completion around December. Okay. Thank you. So really the faster you can do it, then the faster we can get a shovel in. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? Anybody from the RTM have anything? Please, sir, come on up. Hi, I'm Ken Lee at uh, Rhoda Avenue. And, uh, you know, I, I guess the, the one thing that I wanted to say, and I'm speaking only for myself, even though I'm a member of the Sherman community, um, I, I echo uh, what a lot of people have said. Um, I want this thing to start tomorrow. We've been, you know, I know you gentlemen are frustrated. I can assure you that we are too. And uh, sure. you know who did what when, you know we can sort that out at our leisure and and have a public flogging or whatever is appropriate. <laughs> but, um, but it, I personally would much rather see us wait a month and get all the things in there that really need to be gotten, than to, than stuff something through that leaves something out that we really need. Uh, we had a spring concert uh, this year, and I left there as if I had been working in the garden in 100 degree weather. It was unbelievable. So, uh, you know, I just share that with you. I think, and I think we all feel the same way that, you know, waiting one more month would not kill us. But if it if it seems appropriate to move on, it that's fine too. I appreciate uh, but, that. But we definitely appreciate all the time and, and your consideration to listen to us at all. So, thank again. you so much for your time. And thanks to the public for coming out tonight. Anybody else on this? All right. Well, we appreciate the time and attention you've all given, um, and we thank you for that. I'll come back to the board for any closing comments, questions, concerns on this topic. Seeing none, uh, we'll stop discussion on this and uh, communicate tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Tetra, I'll speak with you in the morning. That's okay. And then uh, we'll move forward on to the next topic on our agenda tonight, okay? Or the next topic not on our agenda. Yeah, right. <laughs> this evening. Better put, right? So, so thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Stone. Just, just to, um, Kevin can't be here. Like, uh, Thursday, I'm traveling. I can come later, so if we schedule a later, I can do it. Yeah. Later. Yeah. I can be here you don't know if I'm, you can be here? I'm, I'm okay. out of town. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Stone, for that. You had not pointed that out earlier, so thank you. Yeah. Um, I don't know where he he's, he's, he had right. some conflicts this evening. Yeah, he, he might had be some personal conflicts. Right, right. Okay. The next item on our agenda was, uh, or not on our agenda, but that we need to uh, place on our agenda by a two-thirds vote is a brief update by Mr. Kiley uh, <coughs> and a request for additional funding. Uh, to continue the um, audit of the Metro Center project. Mr. Sanchefani has been waiting here patiently. My yeah. apologies that that topic went longer than I thought. Uh, if you could please come up, Joe. Um, but can I get a motion? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Kiley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I move to add to tonight's agenda the following item. To hear, consider, and act upon a request from the Board of Finance Metro Center Subcommittee for an appropriation of $15,000 from the town's contingency fund to complete the subcommittee's audit report. Do I have a second to that? It's seconded by Mr. Brockfeld. All in favor of adding that item to the agenda? 
If Those yes. opposed? I'm Abstentions? <laughs> <laughs> the addition <laughs> actually added. added. Additional vote. All right. I, I will be very brief, and then Mr. Santafanti, who was patiently <laughs> waited for us, uh, will wait for us. Just quickly, I know we had a quick audit committee update last week. I have a, a further update for you at this time. Um, since we met last Wednesday, we did meet again last Friday, and we're nearly done with the audit in the financial part of the part of the audit, the financial reporting aspect of it. We're almost there. Uh, we meet again tomorrow uh, at six o'clock, second floor conference room at Independence Hall. Should anyone want to join us, we have two meetings scheduled next week, and our plan is to probably schedule two meetings for the following week, which is the week of the 15th through the 19th. That gives us four meetings. Our goal is to produce a report by, at the latest, Monday, August 22nd, in advance of the Board of Selectmen meeting, which takes place on August 24th, which is that Wednesday, in advance of our special meeting on Friday, and all that other schedule. Uh, very briefly, the original request um, that was based on our scope of work and our estimate was $20,000 to date. We are at about $17,000 in spending as of July 31st, leaving us only a $3,000 balance on the current project as appropriated by town bodies. Uh, the, the long and short of it is uh, the work has taken much longer than anyone possibly imagined. The meetings, there's been many meetings that we've had to go to. Mr. Santafati, his team, um, and there's a bunch of more meetings scheduled. There's the four or five meetings that we have to go. There's going to be at least four public meetings for presentations on this project. There will be a meeting pre to present to the Board of Selectmen, to the Board of Finance, to the RTM subcommittees in joint session, and then into the RTM committees in, into the RTM body itself that following night. So there's at least eight or nine more meetings we have to have, and there's a, a significant amount of audit work that needs to get done still. And then beyond that, we need to draft the report, put together the narrative, uh, run things past legal. We have a lot of work to do, and per today's conversation with Chairman Flynn and Mr. Santafanti, the closest estimate we can come up with that we think gets us all in would be an additional $15,000, taking us to a total project cost of 35000 So that's all I had to say. Mr. Sanchefani, do you want to talk about a little bit about what uh, you found in the additional work that you had to do uh, in the first month of this project, please? All right. One, one of the things that was mentioned was the meeting. So we originally came up with the estimate. Uh, we weren't factoring some of those meetings. Uh, some of the other things is just uh, the, you know, tracking down some of the information. It's not really in, in a central area, so there's been time just to get the right contract. There's there's actually many contracts and then many amendments to contracts. So the, kind of the volume of the information has also uh, added some time to, to to pull that together, and. In, in some cases, just even just the organization of, of the information has also added some time uh, for certain areas of, of the project. So again, just to kind of filter through that, find the right contract that's actually approved and those, those type of things. So it's just been some of those logistics in addition to just doing the detailed analysis. And then uh, another part of it is just it's constantly actually being updated as more information comes in, got more information today. It, when I was there, so just that whole process to get a more complete, accurate picture of of where the projects are at June 30. So, so those are some of the items that are that that's adding time that you know couldn't be anticipated until I actually put all that stuff on the table and, and started trying to to pull it together. You had also said in our phone call today with myself and Mr. Kiley that um, the fact that there was no one single point person that had control over the records and that you had to go to multiple people to try to get information and, and uh, put together a full picture it had also increased the, the uh, number of hours that it was taking you to get the work done. Is that fair? It's, it's, it's fair. In, in some cases, uh, somebody in one department assumed another department had information, so there was you know that kind of thing. So it wasn't like a project file or a project uh, area multiple people involved had different pieces and 
And um, I think just due partly to the change in administration, sometimes people didn't even know they actually had pieces of it. So it, it all, eventually everybody's been very cooperative and it's all come together. It just, it just wasn't all sitting on the table or easily accessible. So just, just that whole logistic um, of, of actually getting my hands on the information to put in the analysis and that type of thing. Mr. Tetro, is it fair to say that in, in the work that you've done with this project so far that you've had similar um, uh, experiences in trying to put together all the bits and pieces of information? Absolutely agree. That the, um, certainly in terms of prior files, files being put together, having to search for information, uh, it wasn't, um, the information wasn't always available and what was available wasn't always in what I would call a management readable format. Right. So the data is there, but the um, information isn't. Right. And you would indicate, I know you would indicate, and Mr. Sanchefani, you would indicate separate areas of the project, separate reasons, um, but that there was a fair amount of meetings that had to take place with staff in order to, to your point, Mr. Tetra, to, to turn that data into information. Is that fair? Yes, from my perspective, yes, definitely just meeting with the department and, and even multiple times just as I <coughs> would clarify actually what I put my hands on because some of the analysis, I thought I had an approved amendment to a contract, but that one wasn't actually approved and and, and that type of thing. So working through that and, and looking at what the vendor thinks the contract is versus what my analysis is showing and then going back and forth and finding out what, what I'm missing and what the right number might be. So th those type of things are, are, are examples of what's just taking more time than just here's the contract and, and, and I can just roll forward with that. Okay. Thank you. Anything to add, Mr. Tetro, or is that? Uh, not at this time. Thanks. Mr. Brockville. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I, I was going to ask. No, no. Yeah, oh, please oh, feel free. Was, was I no, I was <laughs> laughing at Mr. Tetra. Oh, um, is, is there? Is there <laughs> yes. Is there? A, is there an action uh, required by this board? I, I yes. Should, okay. Yes. To, I, as a member of this subcommittee, I'd like, given the hour, I yep. can just tell you that. Uh, well, Mr. Colley's work has been terrific, Ms. Leclerc's, and so is Joe's. And uh, if they say they need a couple extra dollars to get this done and done right, I would strongly urge the board to support it. And I, I would just want to, in, in the interest of time, I, I think we should. Make the motion. I'd like to make the motion. Yeah. Well, I'm let's not end debate. Let's ask if anybody else has yeah, any exactly. questions. Yeah, exactly. I'm just okay. trying to. I'm just trying to say that th th Thank this you. is something I think we should that we should fast track. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we always have a choice. But. Okay. I'd just like to agree with Ken that I think Joe has worked very hard in putting this together, and, and our committee has met much more than we anticipated in the beginning, mm -hmm. and so it has become a t very time-consuming process. Yes. Uh, I think it's a, mm -hmm. we've learned quite a bit, but um, it, it's just taken more time than we anticipated. Thank, Thank you. you. Does anybody else have any questions, comments, concerns on this item? <laughs> Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike. Yeah. Mr. Chair, given the, um, I believe the percentage you're talking about, and given this, I believe, has to be approved by the RTM, yep. and given some of the uh, requests this board made tonight to make sure presentations are complete and full, you may want to consider who's going to make the presentation on this to the RTM. I am going to be there. I'd ask either Mr. Brockfeld and Mrs. LeClaire to be there, and Mr. Sensafani, you are going to be on vacation. Yes, sir. So. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I am just on, just so that on that point. Next, next Monday night. Right. So I plan on being right. there, and I would ask the two members of the committee if, if you can. Right. And I have already spoken to Mr. Sanchefani. And if it's possible, could we ask the Board of Selectmen to add this to your agenda tomorrow by two-thirds vote? I don't think they need to. You don't need to? It, just no. the, it, we, it can go straight forward didn't, from here? We didn't vote on it last time. Right. Thank you. Okay. Then you don't now, maybe that's good. one of the issues, but <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, and Mr. Chair, as, as you've probably already considered, I, I just a reminder to make sure that uh, you speak to the appropriate RTM folks to get it on their agenda for Monday night. Yes, I'm trying to. Um, I've left an email already, and Mr. Heller, we should probably jointly reach out, assuming this passes. Mr. Kiley, can I ask you to read your your motion, sure. and can I ask you to 
uh, please stipulate that it's to come from the contingency account. Yeah, I think I did, but I'll do that in oh, because did. I'm I don't, sorry, I missed that. I don't know if Mr. Tetro was listening when I first read it. <laughs> that's right. You're making a motion that's come from the contingency account? Well, that's my, my motion is to hear, consider, and act upon a request from the Board of Finance Metro Center Subcommittee for an appropriation of $15,000 from the town's contingency fund to complete the subcommittee's audit report. Is it possible I'll make that a second to that, and then we can discuss? Is it possible yeah. comment? I just had to, I didn't know I didn't know what I did, I wasn't sure where to source it from, so I put a source in here for this. Um, I believe when we passed the original twenty thousand, and Mr. Hiller, if you'd correct me on this, I believe we took it out of the contingency account for last fiscal That's correct. year. And this we have to take it. Or that, I think we have to take it from this. That, that is correct. My my own thinking, and I defer actually to to Joe wearing another hat. I think we're we're a little past that time frame. That's correct. Uh, That's what I think. Being thought. you know a full over thirty days into the fiscal year, and I would recommend that it be taken out of the fiscal twelve uh, contingency account. Mr. Hiller, if, uh, as I remember reviewing that with you, there's no money left in that account once we do our projections for what's in there. In fact, uh, we may be significantly over in the money that we've currently allocated to be taken out of that account. So I would suggest that that is not an option unless you just need an account to park it in and, and uh, make note somewhere that at the end of the year uh, we will not be under in that account. Mr. Hiller, what are our options? Because this is well, our, our options. Uh, Mr. Tetra is correct. We've done an analysis, uh, and a lot of it relates to uh, potential uh, labor negotiations, where, where the majority of that account is. Uh, there is uh, eight hundred fifty thousand dollars budgeted in that account. Uh, significant percentage of that is for uh, so, so perceived what are our, union. So, what are our options? Our options are to go there, or the the other option is to take it out of undesignated surplus, which which we've never done previously prior to exhausting the contingency account. I think what Mr. Tetro is saying is we're going to likely exhaust the contingency account at some point during this fiscal year. Okay. Your option then is to take it out of undesignated surplus, uh, or take it out of the project. Uh, Paul, have you, have you considered that? Were we going to encumber some money from the contingency account this year? What we're we going to do with, uh, and, and forgive me, Mr. Flynn, we haven't quite closed on some of the issues. Some of these were open. No, that's fine. Points. This is the first we're hearing of it. So, uh, did we? Uh, we had talked about at some point. Do we move some of the money from this year's contingency slash surplus? Well, I think, and, and that would come. That that would come at the September meeting of this right. board uh, okay. in. Five weeks from tonight, actually, uh, when we would uh, really sit down and make the various transfers and, and encumbrances uh, for the year into June 30th. Uh, Why don't we deal with this when we do our quarterly review at the end of September and you guys have a better handle on where we well, are? Your quarterly review is generally in October. I meant yeah, it's for October. the period ending September. Yeah, it, it, with your permission, Mr. Chair, perhaps if um, go ahead and, and pass the motion taken out of the contingency. We'll address the contingency issue uh, kind of in exactly. that September time frame and time to, to make the appropriate audit adjustment. Yep. If that sounds okay. And Paul, if that works from your standpoint. Whatever. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Well, I mean, if, you, if the contingency fund is overspent, then the negative balance goes to it, it surplus. It, so it's one of the same. Well, there hasn't been a dollar taken out of the fiscal year 12 <laughs> contingency account at right. this time. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. take out the contingency. Who cares? I mean, the, the, it goes the, place anyway. The rating agencies are not as excited about running in the red. In. Exactly. Well, no, but, but um, it's, it's, it's not, nothing's running in the red. It all goes to the same place. Uh, Correct. As long as you guarantee they look at it that way, Mr. Mayor. They do. Okay. So the motion is before us. Any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, no, actually, uh, Mr. Proctor. Oh, I seconded yeah. the motion. You yeah, seconded sure. the original. Yep. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns from the budget, uh, from the public? Seeing none, we'll come back to the board. Anything else? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention? Carries unanimously. Okay, that's the end of our agenda for this evening, and that's the end of the post agenda. Do we, have, we have a first. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? All opposed, abstentions, we're done. Thank you, everybody.